<laughs> so as soon as you get the bananas, they're like watching from a distance and they come all running down and they take your bananas. <laughs> Welcome to Guwahati, India. Guwa who? Guwahati. This city in the state of Assam is a world away from the markets of Delhi and Mumbai, but it's still an underrated northeastern Indian destination you need to know about, especially when it comes to its food. Paratas and aluki sabzi, Mughlai talis, pigeon curry, chow. Are you hungry yet? Because I'm hungry. You know what? Let's skip the rest of this intro and just jump into the video. Let's go to Guwahati, Assam, India. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here. I just arrived today in Guwahati, Assam, India, and I'm here with my friend Kabashe. She is a foodie Insta blogger, and yeah, she's gonna be taking me around for the next three days exploring here and also Manas National Park. And we're starting it off today with some delicious Indian food for breakfast. Where are we at? We are at JB's. We'll have some really good Indian food from South Indian to North Indian. We'll find everything here. Perfect. I'm hungry. Let's go inside. Yes. Uh, we are having some puri and club kachoris. Uh, this curry is potato curry with some uh, gravy which is little creamy. And here is the gravy of mashed potatoes. Two different gravies and yes, we'll just hop on. The puri. Look. You know what they call me? The puri god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Get some puri. This is some like tikka, so some potatoes, mm, potato curry. Oh, super rich potato. It's crispy, but it's still soft. And I like that the curry is not spicy. So everything's like very mild. Yeah, very minimal, like normal spices. Normal spices. Yeah. Okay. It's basically like home food. We, we have it every day at home. It's something like we have it at home also. I mean, I'm gonna eat the whole thing if you're not gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we have the club kachori. Look at this little crispy thing here. Oh my god. And then here we have the potato curry. It's a different type of potato curry. This was like a green one. This is like more like red, orange. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it right there. Perfect. And it's almost like a puri, you know? You just put everything into Small it. Mmm. It's delicious. This one is a little more, this one has some spice. Okay. Something, look at that. Just drench it. Oh my god, why let me just go like this. Wow, I could drink this. Is it okay? Mm. We're gonna need some more of that one. That one's so freaking good. I am in love with this curry. That is, whoa. It was more like a chutney. The green pea stuffing is phenomenal. This club kachori is really the best thing in the world. Mm. So crispy. Mm. The orange side mixed with the little spicy, the potato. Mm. Oh my god. No Indian breakfast is complete without jalebi. Basically, this is dough that has been deep fried in spiral like shape, right? And then they take it out and they put it into sweet syrup or sugar syrup. And here we go, this is it, wow. This is actually like more yellow, right? Some of them are like orangey or yellow, so there's two different colors, but it's always super sticky, it's super fatty, and it's delicious. Sweets for breakfast, you have to do this when you're in India. Oh, I just lost like half the jelly bean. Mm. This one's so sweet. Mm. The syrup is basically drenched in it. Mm. It absorbs a lot of that syrup. Oh my god. Oh my god, I love this. Like, I love it. <laughs> no words, you lost it. <laughs> So we had a delicious breakfast, $1.86, $2.50. My favorite thing was the kachori with that spicy potato curry. I mean, it was so freaking good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for some chai. We need chai. I really need chai. As you can see, it's starting to wake up. It's Sunday, people are coming out. It's 10 in the morning right now. And after we get some chai, we're gonna go and explore a temple right here, a famous temple she was telling me. We are going to Ganesh Mandir. It's uh, right opposite Latashil. It's a temple here. So let's see what's inside the temple and how it is. 
Before we enter the temple, we're gonna buy some flowers for to make offerings. This is a Ganesh temple. This is a very old one. Uh, like the idol here was found here by someone in the river. So later, some like everyone collected money and built this temple. So it's it has very like significance and people believe coming here. So yes. So we are here with David offering some prayers for him and his YouTube channel. So now we are going to the main temple. Yeah, and this temple as you can see is completely white. A lot of different carvings here, a lot of details. I mean, wow, this is like super nice. It's all marble floors. Oh wow. Okay, let's do it. Even I'll have. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was like extremely spiritual. He basically like we gave him the offering and he sort of blessed us. Oh my god. Now we ring the bell. Now we ring the bell? Okay, I like messed up my finger there. <laughs> Put my finger too high in there. Okay. Ganesha Temple Latashi was built in the year 2005, but the story goes that a kid found a, the idol, which we saw inside, he found the idol in the river in 1950. He brought it here to this place, and people would come and basically worship the idol. Yeah. You know, give it offerings, <laughs> they started collecting money, and then 55 years later, they built a temple. The purpose of this temple is to remove obstacles. So you go there, you know, you give your offering, they bless you, and it helps you like remove obstacles from your life. And right here we have a cricket match. And if you didn't know, cricket is the national sport of India. So we're gonna try some red tea right now because all the chai vendors here are closed because it's Sunday. Here we have some red tea. The way it works is he boils water right here, then he puts the red tea into this. He actually puts some lemon on top first, then he pours the, the hot water, and here we have it. Oh my God, it's too hot. It's like way too hot. Mm. Oh, very nice. Mm. I like it with a little lime, right? Red tea is so different. It's not my favorite. I'd rather go for chai. We are going to Lokhi Kebir in Fancy Bazaar to try out their samosas. Samosas? Yes, and uh, that's one of the oldest places here in Guwahati. Also, we'll try their coffee. It's very nice. It's much, much better than any cafe and a restaurant coffee. It's for only 20 bucks. 20 rupees, 20 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's funny because you say bucks, I'm like, no, nah, it's not US dollars. This is, uh, this is a traditional Asmi scarf. This is called Gamusa. What, this? Gamusa. Gamusa. I'll get you one in the evening. Okay. <laughs> guys. Uh, we have some samosa. This is the Ras Malai. And this is the special coffee. Special coffee? Yeah. I guess we'll start with the coffee? Yeah. Alright. It's Cheers. Not, yeah, Cheers. no, it's, it's like, I don't know why in India you guys like hot, hot chai, hot coffee. Mm, this is like a cafe con leche. Mm. It's like a little frothy, mm, lots of milk. You like it? Mm. I love it, but I need it to cool down. Ugh, it's too hot. <laughs> it's pretty hot, yeah. It's too hot. We'll start with the samosa now. Samosa? So you're gonna break it like that? Yeah. Wow. And this is the chutney. We'll dip it here. Okay. And we'll have it. Look that. Mm. Mmm. No sweet. Yeah. Mmm. And you always break off pieces, right? You never just eat it. Yeah. You break off a piece and you dip yeah. it and you go at it. Mmm. It's amazing how samosa is so different mm. in every city. Yeah. It's really different. It's always the ingredients, the batter sometimes. It's a little crispier, sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's softer. But I love what they put inside here. Yeah, exactly. It's really nice. Inside is particularly very different from all over India. Like every state has different stuff in inside. You know what? I'm gonna do it the way I always do it. Mmm. It's not spicy. I do have a little ting, mm. a tiny ting. Mm. Spices are very minimal here. This chutney is fantastic. The sweetness to it. Yeah. So it balances the spice at mm -hmm. the same time, which is of sweetness. It balances the spice. Wow. That combination just made it the best samosa ever. Really? Mmm. But this one, with the chutney and the spice, is like awesome. Okay. 
Mm. I have to lick my fingers. So good. The blend of coffee and milk is perfect, uh, and also the sweetness is very good. Like it's not much, and it's very limited. I like the taste. This is Ras Malai. Yeah. So Malai. If you guys don't know what malai is, it's basically like a milk that has been like simmering for hours and hours and hours. Mmm, tiny like little rice balls, right? Yeah. Yeah, it tastes like almost like a mochi, but that has been like bathing in the malai. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, the malai is so sweet. Mmm. It's almost like concentrated milk, right? Yeah. Like uh, a exactly. leche con sal, yeah, yeah. yeah. With oh. dry fruits, uh, it's like condensed well. So mm. It's really soft and very creamy also at the same time. It has kisar, dry fruits and everything. The color, look at the color. Yeah, the color is amazing. I mean, I love the malai, but it's just too sweet. Mm. Oh man. Mm. So soft, so spongy. The coffee is amazing too. Now the coffee has cooled down, it's a lot easier to drink. And this is basically a cafe con leche, Cuban style coffee. It's coffee with milk and sugar. Very frothy. Like extremely like, mm. like buttery. Mm, I love the coffee. I'll have another one. But it's hot, but still it's refreshing. Like it, it's very smoothing and I like it. <laughs> My God, that's the most in coffee. We're absolutely delicious. Bon and where are we now? What is this area called? This is a fancy bazaar. This place is uh, where we get uh, the best street food here. And uh, basically it's a business area here. And you'll see many shops and everything. We'll go right into the corner. Well, uh, like basically street vendors are there. But today is Sunday, so I don't think so anyone is there. But still, we'll have a look what we find there. Here we have Puchka, which is basically Pani Puri. He's giving me a little spicy version. <laughs> this hot one. Really hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's too spicy. That's a good kick there. Oh my God. How many can you eat? I can eat like 500. Pani Puri guys, the Puri God. Mm. Dry? Oh, it's dry? It's bad, it's just dry. Okay. Mmm. Who call was that? So that was just Puri with some tikka inside, no Pani. As you can see, people come here, they can eat like hundreds of these. You see the girls right there? They just keep going. They go, they go, they go, they go. They eat like 20 in a row. And how much is it each? Five each? So four for 10 rupees. So it's like two, two point five, so two and a half rupees for one. That's freaking ridiculous. Okay, I'm, I'm done, I'll this guy. Wow, what a morning. We had a delicious breakfast with a huge booty, an amazing kachori and jalebi. Yes. And then we saw the temple, that was a great experience. And then I had to fill up on a samosa <laughs> <laughs> and a coffee. And then having this pani puri. And also puri. we had uh, ras malai. Oh, ras malai, ras malai, yeah. Nice. I, I, it's, it's a little too sweet for me. Huh. I'm not about the sweets. I'm yes, like more about the savory. Got to I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my favorite thing, I don't know. The samosa. The samosa. the samosa was like outstanding. Top top three samosas. Part, part of my top three samosa of all time. But the pani puri, amazing. Last. Plus, and it's not called pani puri, it's called Puchka. Puchka. Well guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment below, and follow her on Instagram. Foodie Forever and Ever 23. And subscribe to my channel. We'll see you in the next food travel adventure in incredible India. Assam. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, here in Guwahati, Assam, India. I'm here with my friend Caviar. Caviar Shri. <laughs> Caviar I know, but she, she gave her nickname is Caviar. <laughs> <laughs> Today what we're going to do is we're going to see the fifth largest river in Asia, which goes through all of Assam and it goes through this city. And then after that we're going to have an Assamese 
tally, but not any Assamese tally. We're gonna have you said the Muslim version. Yeah. So it's, like it's a typical Muslim uh, Assamese tally we're gonna have. Wow. So and that includes like chicken, mutton. They also have some fish here in Assam. They have a lot of fish. Yes. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the river. I haven't seen the river yet. I've seen a lot of lakes. As you can see, it's really dry right now. I'm here in dry season, and it's really beautiful though. It's still really green. I was really thirsty on the way to the river, so I said, hey guys, let's stop and get some sugarcane water. It is the best thing in the world. Sugarcane water, they have the sugarcane right here. The guy basically just makes it right in front of you. He like grinds it up, he grinds it till there's nothing left in it. So he pulls out all the water and then he serves it to you. And it only costs 10 rupees each. So for like, you can get seven for one US dollar, eight for one US dollar, amazing. This is so freaking good. So refreshing. It is so amazing, especially in this heat. It was funny because it was cold this morning, now it's really hot, and you need this. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Let me jump on this thing. Oh, so tough. The only problem with these rickshaws is they're a little like slanted. <laughs> it hurts, you know, because I. It's called beer. It's basically jujube. What's your name? Pasta. 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 20 rupees. 20 rupees to enter this for, park. For like one, it's 10 rupees for okay. one person. Okay. Oh, camera? How much? Oh, for camera, you have to pay. How much? 50 rupees. 50 rupees? Hmm. Okay. They always pull more money out of me. That's not nice. Can I have some water for free then? <laughs> Here we have uh, red pepper and some salt. It's mixed well and it's dried one. This is also called jujube. It's a berry. It's a wild berry. So we'll taste it. Nice. Good? Yeah. Is there a seed? Yes, there's a seed inside. I don't want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> So this park is considered a couple's spot. People come here on dates, as you can see behind us. And there's the river. And what are these, like little ferries that cross the river? Yeah, this is Brahmaputra, and it's the Indus uh, widest river. Not the longest one, but the widest. Its origin is at Mansarobar in Tibet. It comes all the way from Tibet through Bangladesh, uh, some parts of China, then it comes to Assam. And it, it's known with different names at different countries. This is also known as Luit. Right there we have the smallest river island in the world. This river has the smallest river island and the largest. I'm going to the largest in, it's next to Jorhat, but right there is the smallest. Amazing, and they're building like a little gondola, a little ferry way. Not ferry, but a gondola, it crosses. So we're walking about five, 10 minutes this way to eat a Assamese tally, Assamese tally. Damn, I love tallies. If you guys don't know what a tally is, it's basically a big plate. It comes with a lot of different curries and some rice, some biryani, some pulao. I mean, it's a big mix of things. You got some paratha, some naan. I mean, it just depends on the tally. Like Southern tallies are more rice. Northern tallies are more breads. This one is a mix that you said. A bit of a mix. A Sam type house. People usually used to have this kind of kind of houses here. Now we have buildings here, but eventually this is an earthquake prone area, so buildings won't be built here. So people prefer a Sam type houses, but now like gradually globalization has made into building flats and apartments. But this is the genuine house like most of us used to have earlier, and this is the very old one. Michinga, I think yeah. called Michinga ethnic cuisine, Assamese, Naga. Kasi and Asian, so those are three different yes. states, right? Yeah. No, Kasi is not a state, that's a different uh, tribe. Kasi is yeah, Meghalaya. Oh, it's Meghalaya, okay, cool. So here in Michinga, they have a few different tallies. They have a Naga tally, so they have three of those, right? So they have a fish, uh, fresh pork, and chicken, because in Nagaland, they eat a lot of pork. And then uh, they have Assamese tally, which is just regular Assamese tally. But then they have the upper Assamese Mughlai tally, so that is like a big mix of chicken and mutton. This is like only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different things to try, but I think it's enough. These aren't huge tallies, but they're really authentic. As you can see, this restaurant is really nice, it's very clean. I love how there's like different rooms here. So there's like a room over there, a room over here. So we're like completely alone. So it's very like intimate. 
And yeah, a lot of food. Oh, and they also have a Mughlai platter. So they have Naga, Assamese, and Mughlai. No, Mag Magalaya, Magalaya, sorry, not Mughlai. <laughs> I'm too tired. Upper Assam Mughlai Thali. So here's the Pulao, veg chop. This is the paneer kofta actually. Uh, and this is the chicken korma. This is the paneer and this is the mutton. Look at this. This is a homely Asmi's mutton gravy cooked with uh, home spices. Yes, look at this piece. OMG. So here we have it. Like she said earlier, pulao. Oh, it's eggplant. So it's eggplant. Okay, sorry. And then this is chicken then. Yes. This is chicken cutlet. This is uh, paneer. So paneer, kofta chicken and then here's the mutton with the gravy this is insane like just the gravy alone oh my god i love this food all right so how do i start just dive in here yes just grab one of these some rice the paneer oh and look at this super rich curry mm. oh my god that paneer was like butter it like disintegrated my mouth mm. super light curry but what I was supposed to do is get some of the curry and go here with the pulao. This pulao actually looks like a more grainy pulao, like more like a like couscous. Mm. It's made of uh, Johar rice. It's only found in Assam. Oh yeah, Johar yeah. rice. Johar rice. Yeah. Wow, this is really the nice. The grains are pretty small. Mmm, it's amazing. Oh wow, I love it because it, it is like. Like similar to uh, couscous, yes, you know, like it is. but very fine grain. Yeah. And what's next to it? Like a pickle? It's no. This is the chutney. This is made of mustard, yellow mustard, and green chilies. <laughs> it's very spi spicy. Oh, where's the water? Sorry, I'm grabbing a little bit of yours. Yes. Mix with the rice. With the rice. And have it. That's better. Mm. Wow, that was hot. <sighs> it's still like too hot. Yes. Try the kofta now. Yes, kofta? this one, yes. Okay, so here we have the nice, delicious kofta. Look at that. Ooh, it's just dripping. Mmm. Paneer kofta? It tasted like an animal, straight up. <laughs> like it tasted like it could have been chicken. Mm, very tender. Feels a little crunchy, a little crispy, like it's been fried. At the same time, it's been absorbing this. And then this is a chutney or curry? It's the gravy, it's the curry. It's a gravy, yeah. So here in India, they say gravy, curry. Yes, I mean, they say it's both. Made, but uh, like using the cashew nuts and the pumpkin seeds. Mm, I love this rice. This rice is amazing. Mm. Chicken cutlet, this one. Yeah. So chicken cutlet. It's gonna take a bite. Mosquito, awesome. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It doesn't taste like chicken. Feels very soft. It feels almost like a croquette. It's very mushy in the middle. Very soft. A little, you know, crunchy on the outside. Very savory. Not my favorite. I'll put this aside. And then next, I'll go with the chicken right here. Look at this. Mm. That is the chicken korma. Hands. Ah, uh, these my hands. Okay. So one thing I didn't want to do. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Oh, I love the gravy. Super soft. Look at that. Just pulled it off the bone. A lot of people have told me, like in India, you get chicken with bones. I'm like, yeah, it's real. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't have bones, it's fake, you know? The delicious mutton going here. Oh, but. It's cooked really well. It's so bad. Nice. Look mm. yeah. bone. Oh my God, it's so juicy, it's so tender. Ooh, it just felt, look really at that. Well, it just yeah, fell off the bone. And this bone? Mmm, just pulling the bone marrow out. Mmm. Man, if you like mud in this is this is the best one. Very good. Mm. And if you really want to get adventurous, that gravy is out of this world. Mudden, if you guys don't know, is either lamb or goat. Could be either one, right? Yes. And then I think the last thing we're missing is this guy. It's like a shrimp and ham. This is basically eggplant deep fried uh, coated with ground flour. Mm. Love the eggplant. Mm. Has like a little spice to it too. Yes. Mm. Everything was so good. I think something I haven't tried is creating some of this and mixing it with some of the rice. 
Mmm. Oh, it's so nice, so light. Mmm, this is really nice. I'm trying the pulao, the Johar rice pulao. Obviously with some mutton. This curry is very thick and it's cooked really well. You can see the mutton, the bones are coming out. This is a bone piece though, sorry. But still it's very soft. Oh, it's very soft, you can see. I like the spices, like it has garam masala, cumin seeds and cinnamon, cinnamon and cardamom. Paneer is basically the Indian cottage cheese. It's made of milk. Hmm, I like the gravy. It's very tangy and it's like very translucent kind of thing. It's like boiled with tomatoes and probably. Yeah, I'm gonna make a little pocket here. Put the rest of the gravy in there. The mutton gravy is so freaking rich and delicious. And as you said, it's like cardamom, a lot of different things in here. It's a little sweet at the same time. It's um, you know, it's it's a very not too thick, but but it's really nice. This goat is out of this world. Getting through putting all the fat out. <laughs> what they told me is you make a, you put like that yes. and you make a little hole, right? Yes, exactly. Make the hole in the middle. And That's just, the same way we have our food. Yeah, and just dump it all there. Yes. Wow, and then you go in. <gasps> that mm. they say that eating with your hands changes the taste of the food yes mm. this chicken is so good it's so fresh it's, yes and it's cooked really well right? what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the nice super spicy chilies right here these are spicy like super spicy look at that right there here it is oh it's hot I have some more. I'll get a little bit. Mm. It's gonna help me fight the heat. My tongue is still on fire. The tally cost 450, so that's like seven US dollars, and then the water was another 20, so that's another like 30, 40 cents. Okay, so we had a great day exploring. Okay, this guy's about to kill me. <laughs> the, sun is the sun is blazing. But yeah, I mean, we went on a rickshaw ride. We had some sugarcane juice. You tried some like. Jujubi. Jujubi. Man, I'm about to get hit by everybody here. We're walking in the middle of the street right now, sorry. And then we saw the river, which is amazing. We're gonna see more of the river tomorrow. But yeah, it's the widest river in India, fifth longest river in Asia. Starts in Tibet, goes all the way down to Bangladesh. And then we came here and we tried a delicious upper Assamese Mughlai Tali. But guys, I hope you love this video. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Follow her on Instagram. It's foodie forever and ever 23. Foodie forever and ever. Description, description. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, guys, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next food travel adventure somewhere in Assam. Peace. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here in beautiful Guwahati, Assam, India. Today what I wanna do is I wanna give you my Airbnb apartment tour. You know, I love doing this because I wanna show everybody where I stay and I love staying on Airbnb apartments. Airbnb apartments is the best because you're staying at a local's house in a local neighborhood and we're staying next to, what's the name of the, the lake? Digoli Pakuri, that's yeah. the name of the lake, it's right here. So this is like a nice lane, lane is a street, a lot of like restaurants, there's a lot of shops right here. I mean, you could buy, a, you know, whatever, pharmacy right there. A few different people selling chai around there. And yeah, this is the building I'm staying in. I'm staying in a two bedroom, two bath. I got a nice kitchen, I have a huge living room, I have a terrace. Enough talking, come inside. Careful. <laughs> All right, so you can see carport and this is like an apartment building, right? So a lot of a lot of people live here. First floor is Federation of Indian Export Organization. I don't know, so it's commercial, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so no elevator, so we have a lot of stairs. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Yes. 
Yeah, so I'm on the second floor. So that is zero. This is one. That is two. Right? Yes. <laughs> I hope I'm right. And I love this. It's, a, it's like an older style building, but they've kept it up to date. Nice, they cleaned it up. Uh, some pink walls, some yellow walls. A lot of stairs, though. Luckily, when you get here, there's somebody, like a caretaker of the building, who comes and he helps you with the bag, so you don't have to break your back. And here we go. This is my unit. There's no number here, but here we go. So that's it. So that is how I open up my apartment. Woo. Here we go. This is my apartment. It's really nice, it's cozy. As you can see right here, I have like my little work area. Uh, so you have a couch, nice table, glass table, two different seats. Uh, well here we have some seats as well, right? So I just leave this here, sit down. I wouldn't sit here actually, I would sit over there. <laughs> When you come in, you want to lock up, do that, boom, done. And so this is like living room, dining room, right? Dining room right here. We got a few lights here as well. We have a fan. And I like the green, it really it feels really cozy. And over here we have this bookshelf. On top of it we have this rhino, the one horn rhino. And I'm going to see this. This is in Kaziranga, uh, Kaziranga National Park. So before I go to the bedrooms, let me show you the kitchen. So this is the kitchen. Kitchen comes with a nice fridge. What I love about India, all the Airbnbs always come with this. A big thing of water. So fresh water every single day. You know, it's pretty full right now. I probably won't run out. I need water, it's really hot right now. We have a washer dryer right here. Right, washer dryer, stove, microwave, we got some tea. You always have tea in India and Assam is actually the biggest producer of tea in India. So, just so you know that. And then, uh, you know, some forks, knives, you have some, you know, cups for your tea. And just basically a standard kitchen here in India. Very nice, it's cozy, it's, you know, it's, this really takes me back, I'd say to like 1970s in terms of how it looks. So we have two bedrooms. Let me show you this, the smaller one first. No one is staying here. I'm alone, so no one has this room. Very nice room. They basically combine two twin beds together, right? There's a closet here. This closet has some extra, you know, blankets in case it gets cold. Because at night it does get a little cold here. Over here we have the bathroom. Okay, very nice bathroom. I actually like this bathroom a lot. It's very open, lots of light coming in. And the only thing is that here the shower is not separate from the toilet. There's like, there's no separator. So what I would say is always try to stand over here. Don't get the toilet too wet. Cause then you're gonna have to clean it up before you go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay, so I always keep all of them locked. And that is so like mosquitoes don't get in. Okay, then here we go. This is my huge master, king size bed. We have a nice uh, nice area over there, station. I basically have a charging station over there. We have a table and two seats here. Walk all the way down here. If you need to iron anything, got an ironing board. Have everything out just in case. Over here, we have a closet, right? It's a pretty big closet. More blankets in case it gets too cold. Got my towel, right? And then this is my bathroom. Again, lots of light, lots and lots of light. Yeah, so pink floors. And this one actually is a lot bigger. So I took a shower today and didn't get the toilet any of that wet, you know? Maybe a little bit of sprinkles, but it didn't get it like soaked. And then we also have the heater. And the way this works, most places in India is like this. You have the heater, so when you want to take a shower, you come outside and you go here and you click this button. Why isn't it turning on? Well, I think I turned it on. I had it on the wrong one, so it's probably too hot already. So, how did that stay there? But yeah, so you turn it on, and 20 minutes later, the water's super hot. Perfect. Here's the terrace. So I have it closed, because I don't want any mosquitoes getting in. But here we go. Terrace. There we have it. Guwahati. Beautiful. It's really hot right now. 
is easily like 90 degrees. Coming to go with Hathi and you want to stay in a nice two bedroom Airbnb, definitely check out this place. It's in the center of the city. I mean, we went all over the city today and we really are like in the smack center. It's an amazing location. The, the apartment is super comfortable. I'd say you can come here with a family, maybe five would be pushing it, but four for sure, four people. And uh, yeah, it's just a great place to stay. I highly recommend it. And then before I let you go, I want you to see some stuff that you can see here in Guwahati. Check this out. Oh my God, this smell was so good. But I shouldn't be eating that much. Ooh, so hot. Mm. Usually what I would do, you gotta grab it like this. I get some of that. Put it there. And make like a little taco, right? A little potato curry taco. They're so smart, look at them. They know, they know. All right, let's give them. Here. Next up, I'm gonna make space so you clean it out a little bit, move it to the side. Then I'm gonna take some more rice, move it here, right? And then I'm gonna grab some of this. Let me get a spoon. This is the pigeon. And the pigeon, I already see bones. So for the pigeon, when you eat it, mmm, mmm. Oh, nice. It almost feels like I'm eating goat. Huh? You know, because the tiny bones? Oh. Yeah. I actually took a bone down, a tiny one though. So this is why I need to do two game drives because I didn't know which one would be the best. And as you can see, this second game drive is unreal. Seeing these guys bathe the elephants here in the river, it's such an incredible experience. I mean, so beautiful to see them with their animals. Wow, he's scrubbing them hardcore. This is so cool. Look at that, the baby. So cute. Cheers. To good times. To good times, and, yeah. And rainy days. <laughs> yeah. mm. Oh, it's nice. This kingfish is strong. Oh, this is way better than the original. It's so good. So here it costs 10 rupees for five bani puris. And the way it works is that you just keep going really fast. So I have it. I do it down way too fast though. Like chew it well. Do it slow down. That's how it works, right? And there you have it guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you on the next travel food adventure somewhere in the world. Actually, I'll see you in Guwahati. Peace. Good evening everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Guwahati, Assam, India. I'm here with my friend Kabashe and tonight we're going on a street food tour of Nahru Park. And here at night, as you can see, lots of different vendors. We have biryani, we have momos, we have gravy noodles, which is like Chinese style. There's chas, there's bell puri. I'm so excited. What are you most excited for? I am excited for the momos. I want momos? to just try that. So we're starting with momos. Yes, definitely. Let's go, it's right here. Okay, so we got momos. I'm so excited. I love this. This is so good. So basically Chinese style the momos. Also. Oh, the soup as well? Perfect. So that's the pani. So here we have the momo with like super hot red chili. Mmm. Spicy. Super nice. I think this is a chicken momo, right? Yeah. And then next to it we have some ketchup. No, the red chili is amazing. Very spicy. Momo's very soft. Like super, super tender pulled chicken inside. There's some spices as well inside that. And then next to it, the spani. Oh, so hot. <laughs> Everything is hot. Everything's hot. So the way it works, just put it in here, dip it in all that hot sauce right there. 
Mmm. So right there, dip the momo, right? Look at that. Super spicy. Oh. I personally prefer the hot sauce, with the spicy sauce, over the ketchup. It's not my thing. Mm. It's still like boiling hot, this pani. Mm. Oh, it's a nice soup though. Mm. Spices, a little bit of ginger in here, I think. Some mint. Ooh. I don't know why in India, they love everything piping hot. You tell me. This is a huge piece of chicken inside with some onions. It's really good with the hot sauce, it's perfect. Oh my god, this momo is so good. But I shouldn't be eating that much. Look at that momo. Ooh, so hot. Mmm, just opened my stomach right now. Yeah, so there's so many shops here. I mean easily I see like 25 different like vendors and each one has different things right here We have some bell puri and uh, I love bell puri. Bhel puri is basically an Indian chaat. This is made of uh, potatoes, boiled potatoes, puff rice and some uh, Peanuts and some papri. It has tangy uh, sauces. Uh, it's the imli chutney we tell and it has some spices in Indian, basic Indian spices. And then they gave us like this little sheet. This is how you eat it, right? Yes, that's a spoon basically. It's a spoon? Okay. Mm. I love it. The tamarind chutney changes the whole game. Super crunchy, very refreshing. Oh my god. This dish never gets old. It's so freaking good. Oh, I love the peanut in there. But the tamarind, I mean, there's nothing better. So the tamarind gives it a nice sweet touch and the spices very like they balance each other out. Mmm, so crunchy, very airy. The puff rice is outstanding. The tamarind right there. You got everything in here. You got some onions, some peanuts. And it's only 30 rupees. So less than 50 cents. This is my favorite th thing to grab. Like I come here every time. I like the sweetness of this particular thing. Mm -hmm. It's very light. Right? Yeah. It's very healthy also I would say because it has this does not affect your stomach. We're having sugarcane juice yet again. Sugarcane juice? Yes. We're gonna have some sugarcane juice to like cleanse the palate. We had a few different things and you know now we gotta clean our palate and just change it up, get ready for the other stuff we're gonna eat. Whoa! It's pretty nice. It's very refreshing and soothing. Like for summers, it's just perfect. Wow, this one's like really sweet. Mmm, like super sweet. I mean, obviously sugarcane, so it's always sweet, but this one's like extremely freaking sweet. And it was only 10 rupees. So we're at 20, 30, 30. So we spent less than, we spent a dollar. Spent one dollar. Yeah. <laughs> So here we have a chicken biryani from Calcutta, and the difference that we have here is they also put an egg, as you can see right there. So I'm just gonna pop the egg, all right there. Grab some of that biryani. I love biryani. Biryani is like a mix of rices, right? Mmm. Have the flavors in here, different spices, the rice as well. Different type of rice. So I know it's basmati, but I mean it feels like finer grain of rice. Oh, it's so good. Not too hot, thank God. Mmm. <laughs> Chicken's right there, a huge piece of chicken. Uh, so I have to grab it in my hands, look, just tear it apart. Ooh, look at that chicken. Mmm. Oh, it's so amazing. Mmm. It's like glazed with some delicious spice. Oh, so tender. You got a wing in here. Mmm. And you also have the flavor of the rice mixed in. I'm gonna get hit by a car here. <laughs> Oh wow. Now I got a piece of chicken with the biryani. This is an amazing biryani. Wow. This right here, this little street vendor, 60 rupee for this. 
Mm. I'm also having this biryani with David. This is perfectly good and that too you find it in the streets. And for 60 rupees it's worth it. Like it's worth trying. It's a perfect dinner or a lunch box. I'll try the eggs with the rice. Oh look at that. It's so a beautiful good. slice. And I'll take it with some rice. It's pretty good with egg. We're here at Tasty Truck and this is like a little food truck and they have chow which is basically noodles. We're gonna try some chicken noodles. He's gonna make them right now and he's gonna add some spice because I want it spicy. Spicy noodles are the best. Oh, it's so good. It's a DC Indian noodles. Yeah? In Indian version of Chinese. And here we have it. Chicken chow. Yes. Amazing. For just 50 rupees. 50 rupees, that's it? Oh my god, what a dish. Look how big this is, it's giant. So, just get in here. Mmm, nice noodles. This really looks like a Chinese dish. You know? Mmm. Nice. Mmm. And the chicken is actually chicken lollipop. Yeah, it's deep fried. It's deep fried yeah. with coated, like this nice red with curry. Yeah. A cornflour? Okay. Wow. Can you see the chili right there? Yes. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, dive in. So I think we gotta get some chilies to make it like really spicy. Okay, sorry. No problem. This is basically Chinese noodles. This is what I would eat at a restaurant. You know? Okay. Mm. But it has different spices, so it's a little different. I it love has some of the Indian spices, especially the Indian green chilies there. Exactly. And the, I mean, like you said, the lollipop is just the way it is. Yeah. It's so good. Look at these noodles, so amazing. As you can see, it's very rich in spices. And you have the vegetables, you have some carrots, some onions, you have some peppers, and you have the lollipop. Well, I didn't get any lollipops, so let me get another lollipop right there. Oh. And then the one thing that I'll tell you is that you can never waste food in India. Like if you get this, you eat it. Like we haven't left anything yet. Yes. But we did give the the biryani to the dogs. Mm. So at least we fed the dogs. But we didn't throw it away. And I like the heat that this chilies give it. It's not too hot. Yes. But it's still really good. Minimal spices and too good and it balances everything like proper. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. That's how I got a real spice. <laughs> You got a bite of the green chili, maybe? Yeah, some of the, some of the seeds. You want a water? No, no, I'm good. Mm. Woo, we've had so many delicious things. I am really starting to explode right now. I am full, I'm totally full. Like, I had too many things. Like, for the dinner <laughs> option, it was like too many things. Too many things. And one thing I'll tell you guys, you have to come here a little early because we got here around eight, and right now it's almost nine, and everything is closing. I mean, as you can see, everything here was open, and now it's closed. But we want to end this tour with some dessert. I think she's telling me about something called a waffle, Indian yes, waffle. Yeah. So if I find it, if he is there, we'll definitely have it. And I'm very sorry if even he left for home. Oh no! And if he did, we'll have to find something else. <laughs> yes. So we got it. Yeah. Which one do you want to have? Whichever one you think. Blow me away. Nice. We're gonna have waffles now. It's the Oreo waffle and it's heated there in the pan. It's a batter of uh, flour and later when it's made, we'll, uh, the chocolate sauce is there and then they put the whipped cream, crushed Oreos and some choco chip and more ch chocolate sauce on the top. And then chocolate just on top to the, on top of that, yes. and it only costs well, it costs a hundred rupees, so it's the most expensive thing we're having on this food tour. But it's definitely worth it. It's like a super uh, decadent, you know, waffle ice cream freaking dessert. It's freaking beautiful. Okay, let's eat it. So you're diving in, huh? Yes. This is the whipped cream. Wow. I got a scoop. Of it. Mm. No, it's too sweet. <laughs> so I have the waffle. Mm. It's hot and with a good feel, it's pretty good. All right, my turn to dive into this waffle. And what they did is they cut the waffle into nine different pieces. As you can see right here, look at that. Oh my god. Mm. Nice sweet batter. This is the chocolate. Mm. I love how many Oreos they put on it. It's like it's an overload of Oreos. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab basically every single thing here, like that. Oh, this is nice. Oh, that whipped cream is like ice cream whipped cream. The sticker is like so unreal. Mm. Even though it's not an Indian dish, it has Indian touches. You know, you wouldn't find this anywhere else in the world the way they make it. And the richness of the chocolate and the way they make that whipped cream is really something special. I don't know how they do it, but they pull it out of the cooler and it's just freaking so good. Oh my god. I'm done. Woo! I exploded. I ate so many delicious things. I don't know, it's hard to tell what was my favorite, but what was yours? Mine was the waffle. The waffle? I know, it's hard to compete with the waffle, but if I, I mean, take away the dessert, also, it's so sweet. Also, I like the biryani. The biryani. It's so, pretty good for 60 rupees. I think so. For me, it was the biryani, the momos, and the bel puri. Okay, oh but, yeah. But maybe the biryani, the biryani was the top, but momos was so good. And I haven't had momos in a while. It's really hard to find momos unless you're in more northern India, okay. you know? Yeah. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you on the next travel food adventure in Incredible India. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Guwahati, Assam, India with my friend Kabashe. And today we're doing an incredible street food breakfast tour of Fancy Bazaar. But before we do that, we're going to see a temple. And the reason we're going to see a temple is because today's a holiday. What holiday is it? Uh, it's a Shivratri, like we worship God Shiva. So we'll take a temple tour. It is the birthday of Lord Shiva, so we'll worship him. Wearing a uh, Asmi's Gamusa, this is the traditional one. Uh, it's hand woven, and yes. I've seen this type of stuff in the Middle East, but I haven't seen it in India. I like it, but I, I want to put it on my head, but she told me I can't. <laughs> no, he right. can, but okay. uh, actually it's for the neck. It's for the uh, neck, it's a scarf. Yeah, kind of. Perfect. Let's go inside the temple. Uh, this is the bell part. This is called the bell leaves. It's uh, offered to God uh, Shiva. And these are the diyas, normal diyas. And this is the incense sticks. You'll burn it. Before entering any temple in India, always take off your shoes. If you don't, they're not going to let you in. <laughs> okay. In Indian temples, you get your shoes stolen also. I'm sure they get stolen. <laughs> Uh, and this the year for David's YouTube channel. So what we have to do here is we have to give some money. It's like you know, an offering. offering. And then he's gonna bless us and then he's gonna put some of the red uh, the red the red tikka on us. Three times. A little too much. Beautiful. So I mean, the experience here is to, you know, go in, give the offerings, and just you know, ask him for something, right? Yes, yeah, very peaceful, and the ambience is really nice and very soulful. I feel really blessed to come in a temple and it's an experience overall. Every time I visit, there's something like some purity or some a sense of something that you feel. This temple is actually like two blocks away from my Airbnb. But between the temple and my place is actually like a turtle sanctuary. They save the turtles, a lot of like aquatic turtles. Yeah, that's called the Jul Pukuri. It's one of the oldest Pukuris, like uh, lakes you can say. Like there are tw uh, two lakes, that's the twin one. So that's called Jul. Jul means twin. Uh, these ducks you see here, these are the offerings to God. And they are kept here, they are not killed. So they all are the male ducks. Because uh, to God we pro, like offer the male uh, duck. Unfortunately, I don't have any kids. <laughs> There's no females here. How many ducks are here? Like three, four hundred, yes. easily. Yeah. And people come here and feed them. Temple also feed them like uh, their their lunch dinner. And they have they had a house there which is now not there, but they stay in the water and in the banks of the lake. Unfortunately, we didn't see any turtles. We were about to buy food, but we couldn't spot not one turtle. They're in there though. She says there's like a hundred in there, 
but they must be like under the water or away from the shores right now. And yeah, I'm getting really hungry now. Yes, let's go. Like I am too hungry. <laughs> I've been up since five in the morning and it's almost nine. I can't even, I'm like. Uh, I'm starving. <laughs> I'm starving, starving. Whoop. So we just got on a rickshaw. It's the fastest way to get to the fancy bazaar. We could have ordered Uber, but it's like no point. This is a better experience. Yeah. And uh, it's very cool right now. I mean, the temperature is like perfect. I feel like it's yeah. like 65 Fahrenheit. Probably like 12, 13? Yeah, 12. Max. 12. Woo! Pollution. Yes, <laughs> right here to the left, we have a flower market. What's up, man? How you doing? As you can see, it's like easily 50, 60 vendors right here. here. Whoa! <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I like flew off. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. So we are about to try the parathas, street parathas, and with aloo ki sabji. That's uh, mashed potato curry. These parathas look more like super thin flatbreads. As you can see, the curry has potatoes, and the guys actually rolling out the parathas. They cook the parathas, and then they put the, the sauce on top, like in the container on top. You can see right there. Here we have paratha and alu sabji, which is mashed potato curry. It looks so incredible. I'm just gonna try this to start. Mm. Super light curry. Some spices in there, not spicy at all. What are you supposed to do? With one hand, right? I can't use one hand, it's hard. Then you go in, grab it. Mm. It's not sweet, but what it is is that there's a lot of ghee. So it is a little bit like this buttery feeling to it. I'm in love with this. And it's, it, you know, it's actually filling because the parada, it's a little thick. For being such a thin bread, it has this thick density to it. Let's go all in. Oh my god, so good. Mm. Usually what I would do, is I'd grab it like this. I get some of that, put it there, and make like a little taco, right? A little potato curry taco. And I love how there's peanuts in it too, in the curry. The curry is really good. Like, um, okay, I, I'll show you the curry. Uh, it has potatoes. These are the uh, chickpeas, the small ones, and it has some tomato, maybe some red chili powder, and yes, the basic green chili, coriander leaves. That's it. This is very homely. This is the same home food we usually have at home. Wow, wow, wow. Delicious potato curry with parata. Uh, come on, man, move around me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it actually costs only 20 rupees for two paratas and the curry, so very affordable. That's something like 30 cents US. And now we're gonna keep exploring because we wanna find, what are we gonna find? Uh, I want you to try the puri sabji. Uh, there's another one. Also, uh, there's a shop which uh, serves you great lassis. I want to try that too. Okay, so here we have it, choli batore. I've had this plenty of times. It's delicious. Basically, this is the batore, which is a big puri. And the way he makes it is he puts the ball into the freaking fryer, lots of oil. It blows up and like expands really fast, takes it out. And then we have the chole, which is the chickpeas with some ghee. Then we have pickles, right? Some like pickle hot sauce. And then we also have some onions. So the way everybody does it is with one hand. For me, it's hard with one hand. I break it pretty fast. Like that. Then I get, I open it up. Always open it up. And I put a lot of chickpeas in here. Right? Like that. And then I close it up and I shove my mouth. Chickpeas has a lot of delicious flavor. It's a little spicy. I don't know why, because I didn't get any of that. Mm. Very nice. Very filling um, also. This time what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some of this, but then also get some of the pickle. Right there. Some onions also. Mm. Way better with the pickle. Mm. Super hot. Mm. Very spicy that one. Go in there like that. 
This time get some onions, put it on top. It's so good. Lots of ghee, lots of oil. Very thick and fatty and oily. Okay. You got that? A little taco? Mm. I think the combination of everything together is perfect. You get the little hot, the butter, the oil. You get the onion to like calm down the heat. You're not eating anything, right? It's all mine. The toy batore was delicious and it only cost 30 rupees. And it's this little stall right here on a corner. And as you can see, everybody's surrounding me because they want to see what I'm doing. And something very amazing here is that there's not that many foreigners here in, in Guwahati. Like, no foreigners. Yeah. I'm the only one. So he's a celebrity here now. Like, everybody's getting selfies. That, that's a good thing. Like, I'm really happy. Fancy Bazaar is an amazing place. This reminds me of Chani Chuk in Delhi, but a lot less people. Yes. But it's a market, you know, right here we have vegetables, we have vendors, we have people selling, you know, hats, clothing. I mean, it's endless the, the amount of stuff here. Yeah, you get everything. There's a whole, like, like these part, you have the wholesale markets and the retail stores are that side we came from. Uh, and basically it's a Marwari area, like uh, not the Aspis people stay here. It's the business capital of Gauhati and like all stores, all wholesale markets, everything is here. Everything you want, you'll get in Fancy Bazaar. Anything you want in Fancy Bazaar. Like we are trying Lassi now. It has the milk, it has some flavors of rose and sugar syrup and some almonds. So Lassi, Lassi is delicious. Lassi is like a super buttery drink. It basically feels like a milky, frothy, yogurty milkshake. That's what it feels like. I've had it many places around India. Delhi. The best place I've had it is in Amritsar. This one looks incredible as well. I'm excited. Are you ready? Cheers. Mm. Oh wow. This one has a different taste to it. There's pistachios in here. Mm. What else is in here? I like the consistency because it's not that thick. When it's uh, like very thick it comes to your it's very creamy it's very light like it balances everything well and as she mentioned it's not too thick i had it in amateur and it was like super yeah, thick very creamy. Mm -hmm. the malay on top. yeah this is easy this is easy mm. yeah i mean you shouldn't finish the whole thing if you're gonna keep eating don't finish the whole thing the lassi was delicious it cost 50 rupees each so i spent 100 for both of us i mean it wasn't too thick it was very milky it was very creamy, but they also have here a Sharma Sweet House. Gewar, it's basically a famous dish of Rajasthan, but we have in Guwahati too. It's basically a, a batter of uh, flour, and it's mixed well, deep fried in a whole lot of ghee and oil. Then it's dipped into a chasti or this uh, sugar syrup. Then it's like, you put, we put malai and dry fruits on top so that like it tastes something very, it's a very good dessert. Like in, if you are in India, this is something you should definitely try. I've actually tried it before. It's really good, but we're not gonna try it now because it costs 180 rupees for a big one and they won't give me a piece. So I have to have the whole thing. And because we're gonna be going around the whole day, there's no point to buy the whole thing. Amazing. I think we're gonna have one more thing. I think it's called the Puri Sabji. Yes, it's puri sabji. Uh, it's there. We'll try it. Even I will, I'll see the texture of the puri and the sabji, how it looks, and I'll tell you what it is. Basically, so guys, we have puri sabji. So basically, uh, this is for thirty rupees. For thirty rupees, we are getting four puris, deep fried and pretty hot. Also, uh, this is the curry. This is basically a uh, green pea curry and potatoes cubes of potatoes uh, it's a hot curry you can see it's red in color Indian spices red of uh, like a lot of red chili and yes you can see I'll just have how it is mm. this is perfect this is a typical North Indian kind of feel like uh, the usually I had that in Delhi like I that's very like memorable to me the curry is really nice, it's pretty spicy, it's hot and the puri, uh, it's like made of atta which is the wheat deep fried and, and yes it's cooked pretty well the dough is nice I have another one for you 
with the potatoes. The curry is really good. I really want David to try it. Here we have it. The booty. I love booty. Ooh, this one's hot. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up like that. I'm gonna stuff it with some of this sabji. So get some of that sabji right here. We have some potatoes, we have some peas. It's like a pita pocket right there with the sabji. Mmm. Not too spicy. Very oily. Yes. Mm. Nice big chunks of potato. Nice peas as well. The sauce is, is very rich in flavor. And then as you can see, wow, it's just going through it. I love puris. This is so nice and crispy. Mm. This is very airy, you know? You can make a little pocket. You can also just do that. And then spit it up. You want more? Oh, look at that. The colors here are just incredible. The booty is very crispy, it's crunchy. Oh, so I'm just gonna close it up. Bam, right there. And then. Mm. It's like four different layers of booty. Mm. So that sauce. Mm. Nice curry. Oh, I love this one. I like it because you get the flavors of potatoes, it's boiled, you get the thickness of the potato curry, it's because some of them are meshed and it gets broken while you stay in it and I'm peanut, uh, chicken, sorry, green peas are uh, like boiled well, so I like To end our food tour we're gonna have some desserts, here we have rasgula which is like a delicious, round, fluffy, wow it's so good, it's super sweet, it's like very sugary inside here and this is from Calcutta here we have Kulab Jammu, and this is more from Delhi. Same look, consistency, this one's brown, this one's white. Oh, uh, they're super sweet, like intensely sweet. The best thing in the world is to mix these two together. Break it up, wow, look at all the sugar syrup just coming out of it. Intense. Rasgula. So freaking sweet. Mm. Mushy, airy. Chewy. Chewy, lots of syrup in there. Ooh, it's intense, intense. Jammu, so this one, oh, that was easier to break. Look at that, super rich. Lots of sugar syrup. Mmm, this one's way sweeter. Mmm, this is like a marriage made in India heaven. Whoa, the rasgula has way more like sugar syrup, way more. This one just has something delicious inside. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. mm. Wow, I'm done with sweets. And that's it, breakfast is over. We had so many delicious things. This is all Northern Indian food, not really Assamese. Assamese is more like fish. I think my the first thing we had was amazing. Yeah, that was simple and yet delicious. The, the chole bature, I mean, the cool thing is that all this was like a puri, it's like basically yeah. puris. Yeah, different types of puri, yeah, flatbread. Flatbread, and then also we visited the temple, which was amazing because today is Lord Shiva's day. Yeah. So we have to go to another temple later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Have you ever eaten Northern Indian food? If you have, please let us know where. If you're from India, leave us a comment on where you're from. And yeah, subscribe to my channel. Peace guys. <laughs>
So we'll show you inside. Come. And as we walk up here, as you can see, lots of monkeys. Lots of, and they keep getting scared of the camera. They actually like growled at me. Here he is. <laughs> are you eating bananas? Hello, namaste, namaste. So we are here at Navagraha temple. It's, it was built by the Ahoms in the 18th century. This temple is basically about the nine planets. Where is the, like people come to offer the planets. Like when something is there in their uh, like lives, something bad, uh, like the Shani or the Saturn is bad in their life. They come here off uh, like, uh, give offerings to God and pray Shani Bhagwan and they get blessed and everything is sorted in their life life gets better like for better living and a better like uh, positivity and uh, believe I would say people believe coming here and yes uh, like it's even I believe coming here because uh, I am from a Virgo girl so I, I uh, like pray my God here and as you walk up here, as you see, there's so many monkeys. The temple's very nice. It's very peaceful up here. There's a lot of oxygen. Bye. Namaste. Hi. Namaste. When you go to huge temples, you gotta be really careful with your shoes because somebody might steal. I mean, it doesn't really happen so often, but if you go somewhere like in Delhi or Mumbai, it might happen, especially if you're gonna put some, some super nice shoes there, you know? After you finish visiting the temple, walk out to the left. And here, there's a little viewpoint where you could see over Guwahati and the river, and more monkeys. They're so cute though, these little guys. Yes, this is the view of the river. We are in a viewpoint, and yes, this is an area called Khargoli. We have a walking road to this area. We can walk to there. And also, this uh, road connects the river. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the little guy attacked us. <laughs> oh, I gotta like, gotta be careful, they surround you. They started surrounding us. 30 rupees. We have a little bit of time before our tally reservation, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed some monkeys. I was a little scared around them, but whatever. <laughs> Oh, they're so smart, look at them. They know, they know. Alright, let's give them. So as soon as you get the bananas, they're like watching from a <laughs> distance and they come all running down and they take your bananas. <laughs> there was one little the one pig was there. Literally jumping like he this. was a pig. He just kept he just like took <laughs> he, it down really he fast. Had three of it, like together, all together he had three. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't order an Uber from the top of the mountain, so we decided to walk down. It's been like an easy 15 minute walk. Yes. I mean it's very breezy. A lot of areas with shade and as you can see this is a beautiful neighborhood lots of like old houses you even have like idols right here on the walls we are finally here in the main road and we are getting an rickshaw and we are going for our asmi's thali now perfect let's go right here this guy she's negotiating we always have to negotiate with these guys <laughs> how much 40 rupees that's it yes that's good that's good We made it here to Paradise Restaurant and here we're gonna have a delicious Assamese tally. We're gonna have some fish. You said we're gonna have what else? Chicken? Yes, chicken. Chicken, fish, a few things. These these tallies aren't huge, but they're delicious and they're very local, so must try. Uh, so guys, we are trying uh, the Parampara Thali at Paradise Restaurant here in Guwahati. Uh, it's an authentic traditional Aspies restaurant. So we are trying 15 delicacies of Assam. So we're starting with the rice, the normal uh, bhaji, that's the dal. The, the unique thing we are having today is the pigeon curry. That's a traditional Aspies uh, homely style pigeon curry. Also we are having car. Car is an alkaline property. So we're having that. Also fish, with, which is steamed in a leaf. And yes, fish tenga also. That's very tangy and delicious. David, this is the Indian gooseberry soup. We call it amla in Hindi, amlokhi in Assamese. And it's a thick uh, bread kind of thing with the soup. Yes. Gooseberry soup. Ooh, it's so hot. Very hot. Oh my god. Just take a sip. Mm. Oh, it's nice. Mm. It's tangy. A little tangy. Feels like there's lime in here as well. Yeah. There's mint also for that. Mm. Pretty good. Oh, fresh lime, yeah. You got some fresh lime Maybe juice. Lime. It's not really a juice, this is more like like a water lime. Oh, here's the tally. 
And here we have it, Assamese tally. This is like the most authentic we can get. We got the fish, we have more fish, which is right over here, fish in this banana leaf, right? Then we have pigeon. That pigeon curry looks incredible. It's very dark, rich. Here we have some vegetables. Here we have some dal. And here we have the car, right? Car? Yeah. And then we have some rice. Over here we have crazy pepper. No, no, no. Not gonna start with that. I'm gonna ruin my palate here. All the other bowls also, you can keep it uh, aside. Like so outside out. of the thali. Yeah. Okay. Do you think? Yeah. So it's easier to have, no? Yeah, yeah, no. Whatever you think. So I just get a little bit of car, right? Get some dal. So mix the car, mix the dal, mix some rice in here. Very southern Indian right here. But you guys do this up here as well, right? In Assam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody eats like this? And then what you're supposed to do, for anybody who doesn't know how to eat with their hands, you get it, keep it on these last three fingers, you never let it pass your fingers, and you go straight in. Mmm, it's a little sweet. Right? Yeah, it's made of papaya, raw papaya. Oh, raw papaya? It's amazing. Mmm. Oh, wow. That is amazing. So here we have some herbs. I guess I'm just gonna grab it with my hands. Yes, you can. It's also take some aloo pitika. That's the mashed potato. But straight like this? Yes. You can mix with the rice also if you want. Mmm. Yeah, some nice spinach. Mmm, it's very good. And mix it with that one? Do yeah. I use this? And you mix it all together? Yeah, you can have. So I'm mixing the spinach with the aloo. Mmm, very nice. Oh wow, this looks great. Look at that. Put it into like a nice ball. Oh, right here. Ready? Wow, that is amazing. Mmm. Mmm. A little spice in that one. But the aloo is very thick. Oh my god. Now I'm mixing some of that dal with it. Mmm. Liking it? Oh, I love it. I'm gonna make space so you clean it out a little bit, move it to the side. Then I'm gonna take some more rice, move it here, right? And then I'm gonna grab some of this. Let me get a spoon. This is the pigeon. And the pigeon, I already see bones. Yes, right? there is bone, of course. Yeah. Of course, bones. So for the pigeon, when you eat it, mmm, mmm. Oh, nice. Well, I got a lot of fat there, hold on. It has a different taste of the black sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whole different taste. Mm. It almost feels like I'm eating goat. Huh? You know, because the tiny bones. Oh. Yeah. I actually took a bone down, a tiny one though. Be very careful with this. Nice and tender. I wouldn't know that it was pigeon if I just saw it, you know? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the sesame oil curry. I'm gonna take some of these, get rid of the bone. That one doesn't have bone. That one, take it out, well. Mm. Let me get some of this curry. You see then? Mmm. I think what it needs though, is a little bit of spice. It has no, there's no spice in that one. So I like the pigeon, but I don't love the bones. So I'm gonna move this like that, and I'm gonna get, get some of this, right? Yes, this is the fish tanga. Fish tanga. And okay. the little tangy. You can take the fish also. I will. Mm. The hard thing is the fish. I'm gonna have to go through more bones, so. Like it have one center bone. Yeah, so yeah. both hands or just one hand? Yes, yeah, just slowly drag, drag it out. Oh, okay. But you still see, some of the bones got stuck there. So you have this one center slowly, bone. Slowly, slowly. So the head, then you open this guy up. Try to always do it with one hand. But see, you still have some very fine bones that get stuck. But once you do that, you get rid of this, right? Yeah. There's still some in there though, I see them. Not so easy, this you have to like cut it off, right? Get rid of it. And what that I'm you can chew well, like chew well. Hmm. oh wow. The skin of the fish is fantastic. It's the small river fish. Mm. It might be from the river Brahmaputra. Oh wow. I like going in for the eyes. There's a lot of meat inside the head. Oh wow. That was good. Mmm. Oh, I love the fish. And this fish is very easy to eat. If there is a spine, it's very small. So it's not gonna really hurt you. So next up, we have the fish inside this bamboo leaf. 
Gotta open it up. Look at that. Oh wow, look at that fish. That's with the mustard sauce. Incredible, look at that, it's so beautiful. Oh, mustard paste with herbs, and the fish has been cooked inside this, right? Yeah, it has been steamed. Steamed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, it hasn't been on the grill, it's been steamed. Incredible. Yeah. So I'm gonna break off a piece of this fish, like that, oh. And I get some of this, mix it with it. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. Mmm. It's like butter. That was so amazing. Mmm. It's been steamed to the point that it basically like evaporates in my mouth. You can also taste the banana leaf, like the flavors of it. Nice mustard, herbs. I mean, the fish is phenomenal. Like, this is so good. Mmm. And it's big and like big chunks of it. Next up, we have some eggplant. So, it's been like deep fried eggplant. And we also have like this green sauce, or what is this? Like a nice. Chutney? Yeah. Mint coriander chutney. Mm. I don't love the chutney, but I love this. So I'll take some pigeon. Oh, look at the cubes. Like it has small, small pieces. Like pigeon is one of my favorite meat. Like I can take it over like chicken, pork, anything. Duck. It's, it's also the hardest to eat though. Not for me. I can chew the bones also. You eat them? Hmm, I can. One thing you'll learn here in India is that people, like, they've learned how to basically eat a fish and just, like, eat around the bones and spill the bones out. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I need to be filleted, like that one. <laughs> and lastly, we have dessert. This is called jolpan, which is basically like rice pudding, but they give you everything separate. So here we have cream. We have puff rice and we have jaggery. So what I do is I'm going to put everything into the puff rice mix it up and then eat it cream right there just everything into it then i get the jaggery oh oh i didn't know it was that much <laughs> and then i mix it all together oh my god so the puff rice is basically absorbing the jaggery and mixing the cream throughout and that's what i love about puff rice it absorbs everything that's why it's so popular with chats and then here we have it, look at that. Scrub big scoop. Oh, look at that. Wow, it is like rice pudding, but on steroids with sugar. But it's not sugar, it's jaggery. So when you eat anything in India, and you think there's sugar in it, they don't have sugar, they have jaggery. Guys, our tally has come to an end. We had an incredible day today. Went to the beautiful temple at the top of the hill. Then we came down here, we had a traditional or authentic Assamese tally. You know, it came with two different fishes, pigeon. I mean, it was so good and it felt like I was eating food in Southern India, eating with my hands. It's really an awesome experience and it really intensifies the flavors eating with your hands. And I gotta say, this is incredible. This is one of my favorite desserts in India. Mmm, oh. If you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next travel food adventure somewhere in Assam. Peace. Good evening everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in gorgeous Guwahati, Assam, India. Tonight we're doing something very special. I'm here with my friend Kabashe and we're gonna take a river cruise along the Brahmaputra. Brahmaputra River, the widest river in India, fifth largest river in Asia, and this is a really awesome experience. So basically we're gonna get on this cruise, and what is this cruise? Uh, this is El Fresco Grand. It's a, like, it's a small cr river cruise and it's here, it starts at 4 o'clock, we are here, it's 3.30 now. So we'll board the cruise and we'll have an early dinner. Also we'll have a ride in the river for about an hour maybe. So we'll enjoy a great food and a view. I need a beer, <laughs> one beer. The price for this cruise is 400 rupees per person, but that does not include food, so the food is separate. Yes, finally. Finally going on the river. Whoa. Hello, hello. Alfresco Grand. Very nice. So it's like a restaurant on the top level. And over here they have some music. Live music? Awesome. Alcohol. 
Hey, how you doing? Hi. Hello. Want to have some? Jalebi. Later, later, later. I have too much. <laughs> so we're not in the second level. We're on the third level, on the rooftop. Oh, okay, there's a lot of people here. Wow, nice. Okay, so as you saw, the top level, it's an open terrace. You know, there's two sides. That side is like a huge party. So it's like, you know, four huge tables. Over here, it's multiple different people, parties. Right behind us, we have a couple. Over there, we have these two families. And then right here, what we have is the drink menu. So we have a bunch of different uh, alcoholic beverages. So we have like gins, we have scotch, we have wine, we have cocktails, and we have beer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the Kingfisher Premium 650 milliliters. So that's like two, almost two pints right there. And I haven't had a beer in, uh, in India since I was here in November, so can't wait. <laughs> there actually is some really good beer in India. This is like some craft beer as well, but it's really hard to find beer in India. It's like, it's, it's just, it's not common to go to a restaurant and ask for alcohol. It's just, it's more water or, you know, chai. <laughs> we have a whole lot of starters, like a uh, great variety from chili chicken, drums of heaven, and also more of Chinese. They have Hakka noodles, they have spring rolls, they have the chili paneer and the chili potatoes. They have some great Indian pakoras. Chili paneer, I need yes. that. Cheers! Kingfisher, super light. If you guys don't know what Kingfisher is, this is the beer, the national beer of India. You can find it everywhere. They have some stronger versions. This one's pretty light. It's probably like 5% alcohol, but this is like a double. It's almost like a liter of beer here. <laughs> but it's cool. I think I need two beers tonight. I'm fine with that. So the way it works here is that this cruise is only one hour long from four to five. So we're having a super early dinner. There's a lot of things on the menu, but what we went with is paneer chili for me and chicken pakora for her. And we told them a time, so they're gonna bring it at 4.30 on the dot. So it gives us half an hour to relax, have our drinks, watch the sunset, and just chill. And I mean, the, the breeze right now is like perfect. It's not hot at all. It's a little misty. That is just like a mist, like a fog going over the river. And then behind us, right over there, that is the smallest island river in the world. I don't know, I've, I think there's rocks this big in many rivers. <laughs> Hey, cheers again, cheers again, my friend. Thank you. This river is the property that belongs to the people of Assam. Like, people of Assam loves Brahmaputra. Like, it is the hardcore of everyone's heart. But here we have it, paneer chili. This is one of my favorite paneers of all time. It's like a Chinese, Indo-Chinese dish. Big chunks of paneer. Ooh, chilies. Mm. You have green peppers, you have onions. Get a little bit of this. Grab another big paneer. Mm. The flavor, the chilies, the heat. Mm. I love the combination. It's hot, it's hot. Cool. If you're into spicy food and you're a vegetarian, you will die for this dish. It's like a nice spice. Wow. And this is the pakora? Chicken pakora. Mmm. Nice minced chicken here. Nice and fried. Boneless? Boneless. <laughs> Thank God, but there's no sauce, there's no like chutney. It's there, it's there. No, it's ketchup. Can't do ketchup. So she's saying to try it with the beer. Okay. I mean, it goes hand in hand, right? Fried food with beer, always a great combination. Really good, but that's outstanding. Coming on a river cruise in northeastern India, almost no foreigners out here. This is all locals. Just a whole different world. What an experience. Beer, super good. And I love the sunset right now. The setting is amazing with the river, people. You can see some fish. There's no dolphins, though. Cheers. Again, that is the smallest island river in the world. And the reason we didn't go there today is because today is Shivrati, so Lord Shiva's day. And as you can see, the ferries keep coming in with lots and lots of people. So the line just to get up to see like the, the idol is like super extensive. Look at that. So many people there. But yeah, I mean, we're seeing it from here, which is I think the second best way you can see it, right? Like from the river. We see river dolphins. Also, we see uh, like uh, we tell it uh, water crow. 
it's basically dipping all around and there are crocodiles also eventually but no, I don't think so it's there now but river dolphins is a main attraction so she says there's no more crocodiles I doubt that they're probably just not in this area right now they're probably up the river because every river I've been to in the world has a goddamn crocodile <laughs> We finished the cruise and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go buy some souvenirs. I need to buy some souvenirs from my family, but I wanna show you what like typical Assamese souvenirs are. They have like a lot of bamboo carved things. They have things made out of wood and a lot of things that are like animals, like tigers, rhinos. It's been pretty tough to get a rickshaw and the reason we're taking a rickshaw over a tuk-tuk ride is because it costs 20 rupees versus 80 rupees. So it's four times the price. This is a lot. You know, this is not as fast, obviously, in a rickshaw. Rickshaw, really cool experience. A lot slower than a tuk-tuk, but it's very relaxing. The only problem is that they slant the seats a little bit too much. So you're always looking forward, like falling forward. Like last time like, I hit the brakes, I flew out the freaking thing. <laughs> Luckily, I'm holding on all the time. Uh, this is like you're enjoying you get good videos with on the rickshaw. I think this is more like eco-friendly also less yeah. pollutions Exactly. Yes, save the world guys So the rickshaw ride from the river costs 20 rupees. It's a good bargain. I mean, it's like 30 cents That's off to me. Yeah, 20 rupees Thank you my friend. Thank you. Thank you and now we're in this area and we're gonna buy some souvenirs. Where yes, the souvenirs at? It's there. Oh, and when we're done, I might have some pani puri and see oh, how many I can eat. Sure, sure. I think I'm gonna have to have a lot. I wanna do a challenge. You guys let me know. Should I do a pani puri challenge? So, guys. What is it? These are the pakoras. Yeah. The rhinos. Look at the rhinos. So big. <gasps> This is incredible, so many things. I mean, I love the rhinos, the turtles. What else is there? Do you have lamps? stands. You can take this. Turtle? This is so cute. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta see. I mean, I like the stuff. I think the rhino is the best thing, but... Oh my god, look at all the rhinos, look at all the rhinos. Go see all the rhinos. There's so many. Oh, this is cool. This is like really cool. Wow. I like that. Should I get one for tomorrow? How much is it? You buy the loop? 450? I mean, I don't need it that bad. <laughs> Here we have a bunch of rhinos. As you know, the one horned rhino exists in Kaziranga, where I'm going. I'm going there like in a week and a half. And it's actually pretty uh, light because they're made out of wood. So I think I'm going to take one of these home with me to Miami. But not a bite here because she was saying it's probably like half price over there. So I'm gonna hold out for now, but they're pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so many sizes. They have huge ones you can see right down here. Like, ooh, this one weighs a lot. This one weighs a lot, but it's really cool. I mean, I love these. And there's like tiny ones. There's also a lot of like baskets. Everything here is made from wood. You have some lanterns. You can see you have like beer mugs right here. <laughs> So many things. Is there mass? Uh, this is Japi. This is a traditional uh, thing of Assam. Basically, it's used by the farmers to cover their head while farming. But now this is a like a little fusion version. Like you can decorate your home. There's a bigger one. You can show them. Crazy. That's huge. As you guys know, I collect masks. Everywhere I go in the world, I always try to bring a mask home from my wall. It's like the collection. I'm just trying to build a nice wall so when I'm like 80 years old, I can look back and reflect on the places I've been, you know? <laughs> so I'm gonna get an elephant mask, it's 250. A deer mask, 250. And the reason I'm getting this is because a lot of national parks up here, a lot of wildlife, right? And then I'm also gonna get the you know what the farmers used to wear and this is only 100 so this is like a dollar 50 for this guy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place them together on a wall so i'll put it like that something like that right like this what do you think yes let's go like that yes 600 guys just want to tell you you know how much that is it's nine us dollars for all his gifts gifts for myself <laughs> all right so how much i'll keep this i'll keep this let me get the 500s I did shopping it. Shopping done. Shopping, shopping. 
We didn't eat so much for dinner. I'm gonna end this night with some pani puri. Yes. And here we have our guy, the pani puri guy right here. And I'm the puri god. So here it costs 10 rupees for five pani puris. And the way it works is that you just keep going really fast. So I have it. I do it down way too fast though. Like chew it well. You do it slow down. That's how it works, right? D don't try to grab a pie food from the guy's hand. He don't like that. So he actually gave us an extra one. Oh my god, it's a lot though. Six is like, it's filling me up quick. Pani puri is so delicious. Yes, it is. Like, it's worth trying. If you are in India, you need to try pani puri. It, it has different names, as I told you in the last video. Gul, uh, kulcha? No. no, no, it's puchka. Puchka? It's golgappa. Golgappa. Pani puri. Pani puri. And I don't know if the rest of the India has some other name also. Because I love pani puri so much, I'm gonna end the night with pani puri. And when you start eating, he doesn't stop feeding you until you're done. So we're waiting for them to be done, and then he'll bring up. Then he'll give me six more or five more, right? So ten rupees for five. So basically, I'm gonna spend twenty rupees, thirty cents for what I'm eating right now. There's a lot of mosquitoes around right now. Assam is full of mosquitoes, but uh, I can do it. Yeah, perfect. Let's do it, my man. So he puts the, he makes a hole, right? Yeah. A hole. Put the alu in it. Put the bani. Mm. It goes really fast too. As you eat, you just keep popping them in your mouth. So good. I know people that eat like a hundred in a row. My friend here is the man. He loves the camera. Ah, oh, nice one, guys. Ten delicious pani puri. Mmm. Mmm. Kutka all the way. We had an amazing time out there on the river on the cruise. We had some delicious paneer chili. That thing was super hot. Nice kingfisher beer. The view is amazing with the sunset, seeing the smallest river island in the world. Then we came over here, we bought some souvenirs, and ended it with a feast of pani puri. And the mosquitoes are like killing my friend here. They're about to eat me alive. So I hope you guys love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next food travel adventure somewhere in Assam, India. Peace. Hey, good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here. Right now, I'm en route to Manas National Park here in Assam, India. We started the morning at 5 a.m. in Guwahati and we're driving three hours straight north to the border with Bhutan. Oh, this is like a Indian massage. <laughs> <laughs> This national park is a UNESCO wildlife sanctuary on the foothills of the Himalayas. So a piece of it actually goes into Bhutan and in Bhutan it's called Royal Manas National Park. And the reason we're going here is because it's also a tiger reserve and an elephant reserve. So we're gonna see elephants, tigers. You can go on safari twice a day in the morning and the afternoon. So we're gonna get there around 8 a.m. and go straight on safari for two hours. I'm super excited. It's my first time going on safari in India. And then after that, we're gonna have a delicious just Indian breakfast. I'm super excited. How about you guys? Yeah, hey, what's up, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here with yeah, Kavashe and her boyfriend, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great day. Oh my god, I'm gonna break the camera here. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, wow, after a three hour drive, we finally arrived here to the national park. And we're here at Florisan Cottage. I think it's a Florican. like Florican. Florican. Florican Cottage. And it's like a little guest house. And from here we're getting on the Jeep and going on safari. It's a Jeep or is it a Land Rover? It's a Jeep. It's a Jeep. <laughs> I like Land Rovers more though. <laughs> Quick change of plans. We're gonna have breakfast first and then go on safari. 
And here for breakfast, it's like just a regular breakfast. It's like eggs, bread, butter. We have some stuff that has, you know, Indian food, but it's just regular breakfast. And as you can see, it's like an open restaurant. So there's no walls or windows, just open air, really nice. Really like a jungle experience here in India. So we're having just a traditional like British style Indian breakfast. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. British style Indian. So in India they've adopted the you know the toast. So we just saw how they made the toast. He put basically puts it on a huge pan, makes a lot of toast, he just like you know heats it up a little bit, it's not too crispy, it's toasted just right. And then he also made an amazing omelet. He used like five different eggs, put some different herbs in here. The omelet looks delicious. And we also have some jam right here. Very really nice. And uh, yeah, we have some bananas, some water, and is this fresh fruit? No, I doubt it. <laughs> not fresh fruit. Let me see, what, what is this? Yeah, it's mango. Very nice. So how do we start? We have bread butter. I, I don't need butter. I mean, I, I did like a little excess here. So what I had to do is I just do like that, right? Turn into like a little folded toast. Mmm. Oh. Yeah, because it has this like, this like lime to it too. Like a little zest. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I don't really do butter. I'll do toast and jam, but not butter. For the omelet, I'm just gonna move it here. Good thing is that we have some more toast. So I'll put it there, make a little sandwich, right? These toasts are like tiny. Very like uh, delicate in a way. I love the omelet. No butter, they used oil. Lots of herbs in here, some onion. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep it there. There's a huge cat. I know, it's a tiger, it's a baby tiger. <laughs> Get some more here. I love the omelet. Mm? The oil. Yeah, but light oil, not too much. Mm. This omelet is amazing. Mm. I love the toast too. It's not yeah. too It's not too mm. toasted. Yeah, it's not too tight. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have a huge tally here. I'm joking, I'm joking. This orange marmalade is ridiculous. Mm. Nice and tangy, citrusy. Good combination with this bread. We just had a huge breakfast. I thought it was going to be very small, but it was actually really big. I had like, I don't know, six or seven pieces of toast, some jam, delicious omelet. The juice was phenomenal. Yes, the omelet was amazing. Like the minimal oil, less spicy, no spices, and some herbs. It I was know. great. I wanted some spice, but they didn't have any available. Uh, but it was nice. It was, like, it, was toast, nice. it was great. It was really good. All right, guys, so now we're going to get on a safari. Check this out. This is our vehicle, right? Ready to go? Ready guys? Ready. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna get in this spot. Let's go. Ready. You guys ready? Okay. Safari. Let's go. Let's go. I really hope we see a tiger. I mean, it's super rare, but they're here because this is a tiger reserve. And uh, we're gonna see some deer, maybe some elephants, rhino as well, right? Yes. There's some rhino here. It's not as popular in terms of uh, in terms of rhinos as Kazaranga. Kazaranga yeah. is like full of rhinos. Yeah. The rhinos here are actually brought from Kazaranga. Like Kazaranga, there are too many rhinos, so it's like very hard to preserve. And there are, there are poachers who are killing the rhinos, so some of them are transferred to Manas. Here are some quick facts about Manas National Park. It became a reserve in the year 1928 and then in 1990, it became a national park. When you come to Manas National Park, you can go on safari twice per day. The cost is 2,000 rupees for a vehicle, 300 rupees for the driver, 300 rupees for the gate entry, and then 100 rupees per person. So our total cost is 2,900 rupees, and that includes three people, the gate, the guard, or the, the driver, and the vehicle. So we're gonna do this twice today, so we're going on two safaris today, and that's 5,800 rupees. So it's pretty affordable if you think about going on safari in Africa. So I definitely recommend it. If you're in Guwahati, you have to come out here. It's a must. I mean, to see a tiger is gonna be really hard. The guy, the driver was telling us he saw two tigers in eight months of going on safari every day, but they're out here. So, I mean, it's definitely worth the chance to see it. You know, seeing a tiger in the wild is gonna be, you know, a life-changing experience. Hopefully I get to see it one day, but we'll at least see some rhinos, some elephants, and yeah, let's do it. If you've never been on safari, this is how it is. Three hours on rocky roads, 
looking for animals. It usually starts like at 6 a.m. It goes on to 9 a.m. and you have breakfast, but we got here a little late. You can stay here if you want. I didn't do it just because I have limited days in Guwahati, but definitely come out here and stay at least a night so you can do it correctly and get enough drives in as possible. The best thing when you go on safari is to try to do you know, multiple days. If you do one day, it's hard to see a lot of animals. If you do two, three, four days, you'll definitely see animals. After about a half hour drive, we made it here to this lookout point. It's like a two story tower. And from here, you look over Manas National Park. You don't get too high. I mean, you don't look over the trees as you can see, but you get a good view of the area. And there's, I mean, there's a few peacocks here. There's one right there. There's another one over there. And you hear them, they're like making mating calls. Let's see if we hear any. All right, we don't hear any. Oh, I'm still out of breath, but let's continue the drive. Peacocks everywhere. There's so many peacocks. I mean, that's the animal we've seen the most. We've seen a few deer, but mostly peacocks. And there's, I guess it's mating season. I don't know how that works with peacocks, but they're always like opening their wings. We did not see animal yet, but uh, hoping for the best. Like he's telling me we will see the elephants now because we'll see that area has most of the elephants. And this guy has seen tigers many times. Like, like he's the driver of the vehicle, so he takes tourists every time. So uh, the tiger passes by his vehicle, so he has seen many times. Ooh, I'm, I'm a little out of breath after running up the stairs to get to the top of the tower. But yeah, I mean, the main thing we've seen is peacocks. But they also have a lot of endangered species, what I was reading. They have some monkeys. They also have some turtles, some uh, Assamese loghead turtles. Okay. okay. And they have some other stuff. I mean, when you go on safari, you have to really be patient because it's not like a guaranteed thing you'll see animals. But you definitely will. I mean, you're in the jungle and oh my God, it is bumpy. Oh my. So we have some wild buffalo all the way over there. It's a far for us right now. Very fun. Here we have another peacock. Beautiful bird, all blue. Behind us, we have the biggest animal we've seen today and it's the wild buffalo, which is also called the Asiatic, so the Asian water buffalo. There's over 800 here in Manus National Park. It's a beast, as you can see, the horns are huge. He's really far away, he's easy, like, I don't know, like how many meters, 200 meters, 300 meters away, at least. And then over here to the right, we have some deer. They're a little far in the distance. I mean, they also have a, there's also like a big glaze over them, like the haze, so I can't really see them really well with the camera, but they're right here. And so this deer is the food of the tiger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it has to be innumerable. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Over here we see our first elephant. He's really far over there. I'm hoping we get closer because from here I don't see anything. Are we getting closer? To the tower? That's the jujube, that's the bogori. I got it from that tree. Do we eat it? Yes. Is it already fast? Yes, it's a berry. It has a seed inside. Mm, very sour. Yeah, you had uh, like we have it with salt. Mm -hmm. Dip into salt and have it. We, we make pickles of it. I'm good right now. <laughs> mm. Throw it over there, and I want to show you guys this. So there's a lookout point up here, and from here we're gonna see if we can see the elephant and the buffalo. Oh, I'm getting my exercise today. <clears throat> lots of steps. Lots of steps. Okay. So this is how it is in most national parks. They'll have like lookout points or hides. And from here you get incredible views over everything. Wow, it's beautiful right there. You can see the buffalo. And there we have two elephants. Incredible, and over here we have a few deer. They're so hard to see. The elephants, finally we can see them. Look at that, so beautiful. And I love how flat this place is. It's crazy that it's right beneath the Himalayas. Super flat land. Very green for the dry season. It's extremely green. I've been in Africa in dry season, and it's like brown. This is gorgeous. That's it. I mean, we saw the elephants, saw the buffalo. Let's continue the game drive. I'm really hoping we get closer to these animals. I mean, I want to get like feet away, like a few feet away. It'll be a lot better for imagery and just a different experience when you get really close to the animals. You see their, you know, them in their natural habitat. Let's do it. Hello. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. Tiger, tiger. 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 We have a little staircase here. Boom. And something I want to mention to you guys is that you definitely should bring 
a zoom lens whenever you go on safari. So I actually rented this one from Lens Rentals. This one is a 35 to 100. I would say go 100 to 400 if you can. And definitely turn on the, the stabilizer here. I turned it on. Now, the first few things I shot, I didn't have the stabilizer on. My bad. Uh, so now I have it on. Lensrentals.com is a really great place to rent lenses. It's easy, it's affordable, and I'd rather do that for these types of trips because I never use this lens. I only use it when I need to see wildlife, and that's like a few days a year max. Awesome. Oh, look at this, look at this. What is over there? Deer, deer, this one. Oh, right here, right here, right here, right here. Wow. And he's staring at us. He's so close. This tree fell, and there's only one way for them to clean it up, is to cut it up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Careful with that. Might cut your finger. This is a grassland, so like a lot of trees are there. So they wanted to make it a grassland again, so they're cutting the trees. Oh, okay. It looked like they were all falling. Yeah. Black Panther and Cloud or Leopard? Yeah. Wild pig's running right there? Yeah, I see it. Right there, wild pig. It's buffalo over there? Mm -hmm. Buffalo right there. There he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. The biggest issue I have with the game drive is my butt breaks. <laughs> Serious though. It's like after a while you just your butt is like, no, no more. <laughs> Our outskirts, right? So one fine morning you woke up and saw that the uh, leopard was on its balcony. Those are the foothills of the Himalayan ranges, like on that side would be Bhutan, Rubel. Wow, so right over there guys. We made it here to the river and this river actually comes Manas Bike and it comes from Bhutan. Bhutan. It's oh. China. Nice. So yeah, so this river comes from Bhutan and it goes all the way out to the river, the main river. What's the name of the main river? Jugi Gupai, yes. It connects to Brahmaputra, yes. It is 11 a.m. It's getting really hot. I had to take off my sweater. I was boiling. <laughs> all the animals are asleep now. You know, because at this time everything goes to sleep. The best times to go on safari are really early, 6 a.m. ish to 9 a.m. And then again, like I'd say 4 to like 7. That's the best times. We're doing it a little differently because we came for the day. So we're doing it from 8 to 11 and then from like 2 to 5. I think yeah. that's the, that's six the time. You said, two six, to six. 2 to 6. Wow, so 4 hours. You remember, wildlife is not like a guaranteed thing. Exactly. exactly. But you get chances and you know, it's maybe- It's all your luck also. Yeah, it's about luck, unfortunately. I mean, the tigers are like almost impossible. The, the guy was saying, one of the guys said he saw it a lot of times, the other guy said he saw it twice in-, in Eight months. In eight months, so it's like, wow. All right guys, so if you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. All right guys, peace. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Manas National Park, Assam, India. This national park is a UNESCO World Heritage Wildlife Reserve. There's tigers, there's elephants, there's rhinos, there's boar, there's peacocks, lots of different wildlife up here. There's actually three hours north of Guwahati, right next to Bhutan, literally bordering Bhutan. And in there, it's called Royal Manas National Park. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on a game drive, but before that, we're gonna have lunch, a traditional Assamese lunch. We're gonna have some chicken, some fish, some rice, and some chilies. I'm sure they're really hot. We're basing ourselves out of the Florican Cottage. This is a nine bedroom cottage, so there's like nine little houses. Each one has either two or three beds, so it starts between 2100 rupees to 3500 rupees per night, so very affordable. It's right next to the entrance of Manas National Park, and then from here you take the game drives, right? In the middle they have their restaurant, so you have breakfast, lunch, dinner there. We had breakfast this morning there, we're gonna have lunch now. I wanna show you one of the cottages so you can see what it looks like, follow me. And here we have a cow. <laughs> and this is called the bar bed. So they actually gave this one to us for the day so we could just like use it for the washroom, bathroom. And here we are, if we wanna take a rest. All right, here it is. So this one has two beds, right? Got the fan. This is for mosquitoes, so turn it on. No, it's on, it's on, okay. I'm, I'm all bit up, by the way. Guwahati, kill me. 
we have the bathroom. Very nice. Up to date, shower, toilet. I mean, this place is definitely budget friendly. So if you're thinking of coming up to Manas for at least one night, come up here. The food is awesome. We had delicious breakfast this morning with some toast, some eggs. I mean, it was really filling with jam. Okay, so let me show you the property. Nine different cottages, right? Here we have the first one. Here we have the second one. These are the smaller ones, as you can see. They're like, you know, one room. That one is like a double. So a family is actually staying there right now. I think it's six people staying there. And then over here, over here, the same thing. We have two different units, very similar to those two. And this is a bigger unit. This is actually the more expensive one. They were telling me this is like 30 to 3,500 per night. So it actually stays three people or fits three people. There's three beds. And then another one similar, very similar next door. I mean, the difference here, I think, is the colors, but the interiors are all the same. And in the middle, we have the restaurant. So let's go eat some lunch. I'm super hungry. I want some fish. I want some chicken curry. What about you? I want some chicken curry. Chicken curry? With some rice. That will be very soulful. Yeah, that'll be very soulful. <laughs> but we don't get any boar, huh? There's a lot of boar, but we don't get any. Oh, no. So here we have it. We have dal. We have mixed vegetables with curry. Chicken curry. Rice. We have tomatoes, carrots, onions, cucumber. And what is this? Papper. Papper and? Indian version of french fries. Indian version of french fries, like tiny french fries. Yeah. So we're gonna start off with some rice, some curry vegetables. This curry vegetables looks amazing. We also have some dal. What I have to do for the dal is I have to open a hole in the vegetables right here. And then you get the dal. Just into it right there. It's in the middle. Nice. Right there. So this is chicken curry. This chicken curry looks incredible. Wow. Just beautiful. <gasps> I feel bad, I might have to eat all of it. I'm joking, my friend. <laughs> it's so good. This brown curry with all, ooh, big pieces of chicken, got some tomato in there, got some potato as well. What else is in here? Some herbs, got some carrots. This is awesome. And I'm gonna get some more of the sauce and just put it here to the side, right there. Like some tomatoes, some carrots, and an onion. I don't really like eating onions like this, but it's fine. Inside the bowl is fine. Inside is fine. And then the papa. Yeah. Papa. This fries also. Oh, I love this. Mm. So how should I start? With the dal and the rice? Dal and the sabchi. Mmm. Oh, wow. Love the dal. Mmm. Super light. Yellow dal. Flavors are great. Mmm. The rice is like a sticky rice, actually, right? Yeah. So, this is local rice. We actually saw the rice fields while we were driving up here. Look at that. Loving this rice. Wow. You can see that the, the dal has basically been absorbed by the rice. Oh, this is amazing. Mixed vegetable curry right here. Looks so good. So, we have green beans, we have potatoes, we have carrots. Mmm, it's a little spicy, like a little bit. What I like the most from there is the green beans. Mmm, fire. And here we have some of the chicken curry sauce right here. Oh, the chicken curry, like the curry part. Dude, I love the richness of it. Spices. Mmm, wow. The sauce is fantastic. Lots of good spices in there. Chicken's nice and tender. Mmm, very organic, super local. Mmm, brought some chilies. So many chilies, so little time. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one, right? You should not eat these chilies straight. You should cut them up into tiny bits and mix them in the rice. That's what I like to do. So I got like a piece of it, right? Mmm, mmm. Wow, nice and hot. Mm. Oh, but it brings out so much flavor in there. Just the spiciness, the level is, I'd say it's a five out of 10. Mm. Oh, the chicken curry is incredible. Like, it's awesome. I just love having chicken with like a nice thick curry, you know? And now I'm gonna put some of the Indian style french fries with some rice and some curry. Mmm, mmm. 
It's like french fries that are like super tiny, super crispy. Put a bunch of chilies. This time I'm gonna go all out and mix everything together. Chilies, vegetables, rice, super hot. Let me get another one. Yeah, super good. But you gotta keep going, you know? Assam has the second spiciest pepper in the world, a ghost pepper. Second spiciest. I'm not that brave. I'm not gonna try that. <laughs> Look at this nice, tender piece of chicken. You can see all the curry, it's so rich. Lots of vegetables in here. Mmm. Definitely need some more rice. I thought it was too much, but I guess I'm really hungry. I'm getting a lot of weight here in India. <laughs> like easily gaining weight here, you know? Today I, I couldn't even, I mean, safari, I couldn't sit down correctly because my pants were so tight. <laughs> right there. It's like, it's a whole different world having chicken that's been like literally killed today. Like born here, bred here, and then they butchered him for us. I mean, it's sad, but at the same time, it's the best chicken you can eat. Mm. Mm. Oh, I had to add this pepper. It just gives it a nice kick. It's too good. Can't stop. After such a delicious lunch, we are ready to go on our second safari of the day. Game drive, love it. And here we have it. Here we have a Jeep. This is my spot right here. Let's get on. Oh, ready to go. It's a little tight back here. But I can do it. My friend, you ready? Okay. You ready? I'm wearing my hat. This is made of water, Haiti. It's a product of a Sam. Yes. <laughs> How do I look? You look good. You look good. I like it. <laughs> the price for the game drive is 2000 for the Jeep, 300 for the driver, 300 for the gate entry, and 100 per person. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. Right there, is that a, oh no, that's a, it's a, a little goat right there. Yeah. More goat, this goat. Uh, this is a bird called Moina. It gives voice, like, it's another, there's another one. There's many actually, there's a peacock also. This bird mimics your voice, as you can see, it's the one with the orange head. It's a little far away, but it's the one with the orange head. There's actually like four or five of them. And right there we have a peacock. So many birds up here. Yeah. We're on a mission to find some tigers. I pray, I pray. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. With both hands. Yeah, it's really rare. Like, it's extremely rare to see a tiger, but they're here. Over 36, right? You said 36? 36 and other leopards, um, black buck, everything. So, black panther, leopards. Yeah, I mean, you can see them, but it's super hard. I mean, the thing about the wilderness is that when you go out on a safari, you really have to have your expectations very low. Because when you do see something, it's amazing. Even seeing like a wild boar, it's incredible to see him in his own habitat, you know? We have some deer, like three of them, and two are there, that's it. What we just saw was the hog deer. We saw a family, like four of them together to the left, and then we saw two to the far right. We stayed like 30 meters away, because if you get too close to the vehicle, the vehicle makes way too much noise, and they'll get startled, and they'll run. So from far away, it's the best way to see them. And like that, I changed my lens, and I got really good shots, as you can see. The number one rule on safari is that you can never get out of the vehicle and that is for your safety, not the animal safety. Imagine you get out of the vehicle and there's a rhino, a leopard, a tiger, a black panther or even a buffalo, you're in extreme danger. And the reason we have a guard with us is because if anything does get close, he won't shoot the animal, he'll shoot up in the air and scare the animal so it runs away. And he will not let you get out of the vehicle at any time during the game drive, so never attempt that. It's the dry season, so like uh, it's pretty dry. So the leaves and everything from the trees have fallen down, so it's the fall season, you can tell. So from April you'll uh, see uh, orchids blooming in the trees, so it's more fresh and yes, more beautiful. Uh, so if you want to see all the animals available at the Manas National Park, so you need to stay here for 5-6 days and go for all the safaris. So we saw two of the buffaloes, the water buffaloes. So there are two. So one is the baby and one is the mother. They have another baby which is like hidden somewhere there. So the mother is running for the small baby. Because she's scared. Yeah. We just saw a family of 
a huge family of deers. Just look at that. Yeah, the deer were like a little startled. So what we did is we parked, you know, staying very quiet. We really shouldn't be standing on the vehicle because they, they get startled by that. But as you can see, they're just like moving their ears. And if we were to like just turn on the car and move, they'll start running. Okay, so right here we have an eagle. It's really hard to see it, so the driver gave me some binoculars. Okay, yeah, I see it. So what type of eagle is that? Not a bald eagle. Okay, too close. Uh, we have seen some elephants. They're the wild ones. Uh, there is a group like father, mother, and a child maybe. Right there. So as you see, there's a herd of elephants, and what we did is we like kept moving because the elephants didn't get too close, and they will like hit the vehicle if you startle them. So as you see, like I, I don't know what he's doing. He'll run. You think, no, he's not a charge. No, nah, I mean if they're gonna get too close, if we get too close to them, they'll charge, but not like this. You think? Yeah. I don't know. I've been in Africa where they're right here and they don't do anything. Like these, these are much more like. You think? Much more wilder. No. I think so. Like they've destroyed many houses. Like they come oh. overnight and destroy everything. Actually, they love salt. The Indian animal, like elephants, love salt. They get a smell of salt. They tr that attracts towards the maybe the neighborhood. We can see another elephant that's alone and that's the male one and it's quite big, like quite a big one. You can tell it's a male because it has a big tusk. Look at that, it's huge. So we're not gonna go over there? No, no, no. That's the elephant of the forest, like the forest guards. Uh... Elephant. So the guards here, they also have their own elephants that they've basically tamed and they ride them as you can see, he's riding it right now. Look at the baby. Look at the baby. He's so cute. No. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, sorry. Oh, all are going for a bath. Amazing. Oh my god. I can I see this? Incredible. Wow. So this is why I need to do two game drives because I didn't know which one would be the best. And as you can see, this second game drive is unreal. Seeing these guys bathe the elephants here in the river, it's such an incredible experience. I mean, so beautiful to see them with their animals. Wow, he's scrubbing them hardcore. This is so cool. Like it's a happy moment of the trip, like the best one. Though it's not the wildest one, but I'm seeing this for the first time. Me too. That's why I think it's so special because I've never seen, yeah. like, you know, them bathing the elephant in the wild. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're domesticated to them, but still in the wild because yes. they're still here. And especially the kid one, uh, like, he's having the best time. Yeah, yeah, he's it's really enjoying pool himself. Time, like summertime, pool time kind of thing. Yeah, he tried to actually touch me when we were on the car, yeah. and, and the owner didn't like that, but yeah. I want him to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's such a great experience watching them here. This is so cool. I really wish I can get down there and help him, you know? Uh -huh. oh. That was epic. That was really cool. I've actually bathed elephants before, but at a sanctuary. Okay. I've done that. Okay. It was very nice because they enjoy it. They really like to get wet. And here's another herd of elephants. There's like six right there. The only problem is you can't get too close to the elephants either because they can then, you know, ram the car. Uh, it's the Asiatic water buffalo. It, it's a 30 year old, like, it's a pretty old one. So here's a tree where we can see the racking mark of a tiger while hunting something maybe. Wow, right here, this one? So he basically put his claws into it, scratched it up, wow. So that means we're close. 
<laughs> I wish. Man, so the tiger can be literally right there sleeping. It's like by this thing, they make their nails sharp and like clean after their hunting. They can see lard and all the stuffs in their nails. Wow. So they clean their nails and sharpen. Incredible. Like it drags out, so it gets sharp like a sh like. When you do something or a yeah, knife, sharpen, sharpen. yeah, or you do with a knife or a stone, it gets sharpened, right? So when he does with his nails, like it gets clean and sharp at the same time. So for his next hunt is ready. Uh, so this jungle, the Manas National Park, is 2,837 square kilometers. Like it's quite a big area. Like it's a huge one. Like like we did two safaris, but still we'll have some areas. That we not cover money. And that includes Bhutan? No, no. No, that's separate. The, the only Indian part. Oh. Nice. Manas River? Manas Biki River. Look at this. We're here on the riverbank, and there's a lot of turtles and fish down here. Very cool. Right there is the Himalayas. And that's Bhutan. If you guys don't know about Bhutan, Bhutan is a landlocked nation between China, India. That's it. China and India is the only uh, borders that Bhutan touches. As you can see, the river is like crystal clear and the water is really cold. I'm sure it's delicious to drink. I'm not really that brave. I don't drink water in India from rivers. <laughs> but what we're going to do now is we're going to take a drive back to where our car is. And on the way, if we see any animals, we'll get that. And if not, the game drives over. What is it? Capit. Capit. Capit langur. Capit What is that, like a, a monkey? Yeah, a monkey. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, there's a, like a family of monkeys up here. One, two, three, four, five, six monkeys. And that's, a, I think that's an endangered species, right? Endangered yeah. species. I think they're endangered. Yeah. I know there's a lot of endangered species here. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's the golden langur one, which is endangered. So here we have another group of Capit Langurs and they're really high up in the tree as you can see. There's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, they're coming down. Look, 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 they're coming down. Oh, they went back up. <laughs> A lot of babies too. The sun has set and our game drive is now coming to an end. It was an incredible experience. We started off with a delicious, delicious lunch. The chicken curry and the vegetable curry were phenomenal. Delicious. And then after that, we came on the game drive. We saw, I think, two herds of elephants. Yes. We saw the people who like watch over the national park with their elephants bathing them. What yes. an experience that was. And then after that, we saw a buffalo. We saw some deer, like a little herd of deer. And then we saw two groups of monkeys. Now we langurs, right? It's an amazing experience coming out here to Manas National Park. I highly recommend it. Three hour drive north to Guwahati. Stay out here for at least one night. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next travel food adventure somewhere in Assam, India. Peace. Hey, good evening everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here. Right now I'm in route from Manas National Park back to Guwahati. Tonight what we're doing is we stopped here to eat dinner at a Daba. A Daba is like a roadside restaurant. You can find this all over India. And the way it works is that all of these usually have a mix of Indian cuisine. Like they have Andras, uh, Andras food, yeah, uh, Rajasthani food, Punjabi food. food. I mean, they have a mix of different foods from all over India because a lot of truck drivers stop here to eat and they want to eat their food, right? Yeah, I suppose they have Chinese too. Chinese too? I'm not doing Chinese. I think I'm just going to go spicy Indian. Oh, yeah. Some chicken curry, hot chicken curry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's raining right now. It's like really coming down. Yes, umbrella. Yes, there's a huge one. A huge umbrella. And a tired face, don't ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of eating in the restaurant, we're gonna eat in like this little like hut, right? Yeah, that's the cottages. That's it? Okay, okay, let's go inside. Oh, oh my god. Kingfish is strong. Kingfish is strong. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge menu. You cannot imagine a dhaba will have such a huge. <laughs> Just look at it. 
Okay. Fine, are you fine? Yeah, fine, fine. Cheers, cheers. Cheers. To good times. To good times, and, yeah. And rainy days. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's nice. This kingfish is strong. Oh, this is way better than the original. It's so good. So this is the Kingfisher Strong. Super strong. I think this has to be like 8% alcohol. This is more like a strong ale or like a brown almost. Very nice beer. One of the best beer from India, Kingfisher. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with like a mix of everything. We got mutton, fish, chicken, rice. You want to try prawns? Let's go prawns. Okay. Prawn no? No, no. I'm game for everything. This is my, my driver. He's, uh, he had a, a day off today. He relaxed for the whole day. <laughs> he drove us three hours and slept for the whole day. This Kingfish Strong is phenomenal. Wow. My man. I think we need to get another one. One more. I ordered for rice, chapati, uh, dal fry, one mixed veg, uh, uh, chicken maharaja, pork dry fry. We ordered fish curry and yes, probably that's it. Yeah. Pakora and the rain, a perfect Indian combination. Also with a chai it goes well, but you have beer. <laughs> <laughs> the list like doesn't end. It keeps going and going. It's so many items. So many and everything is available, that's the best thing. We're at 250 right here. 250 items. And the cool thing is that this is a huge mix of all different states of India. And they also some Chinese because they have a lot, like a big Chinese influence up here. Wow, so good. We just lost power. Yes, it's so dark. <laughs> Onion pakoras. Look at that. It looks phenomenal. I'm gonna grab a tiny one. Oh man, mm. nice spices, very crunchy. Wow, it's very juicy as well. The onion just like pops in your mouth. I, I love that we're in the dark. <laughs> And this was really good with beer. Lights back, lights back. So I can have like around 40, 50, I can go. With some uh, chutney maybe? Yeah, 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 you need chutney. The onion pakora. Look at that. Very nice. Fried, crunchy. Mmm, so good. Amazing appetizer. Flush it down with some beer. Oh, so good. Kingfisher Strong is amazing. We have a massive feast. We have mixed veg. We have mutton, chicken, fish, pork. It doesn't end. Three different rices, well, white rice, and we have chapati, and here we have the mixed veg. Basically, this is all paneer, right? Paneer. Next up, we have the dal, as you can see. It looks so good, so rich in color. Very orange, yellowish. Make a hole in the middle, right? That's how you do it, hole in the middle. Pour the doll on. Perfect. I'm gonna start with the mixed veg. Mm, it's like paneer, potatoes, got some green beans, nice curry. The curry is insane. Every dish in India is like this. So here we have the doll. It feels like almost like a watered down doll, like more like a soupy doll. Very delicious. I'm all about lentils, so. Wow. And this pork has like a lot of vegetables. So dry fry with green chilies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So dry fry with green chilies. So it's not a curry, but it still has a lot of like, I guess like richness to it in sauce. Same thing, mix it here. Oh, chilies and everything. It's gonna be super hot. Mm. That tastes like a Chinese dish. Yes. Straight Chinese. And that's something you can find up here in Assam. It's pork. It's really hard actually to find pork in India. Assam, Meghalaya, where I'm going tomorrow, Shilong. They have a lot of pork. Guys, I love it. Yeah. Have it all? I don't know. So tender, so juicy as well. And you know that this pork was killed like today. It's, it's fresh, fresh from the farm right here. And this piece right here, as you can see, has this nice piece of fat. So it's gonna be very juicy. Mm. I like jello. 
straight like that though. So I got the roadie right here. Wow. Now I'm making the mud in. Oh, there is mud in. Look at how rich and dense this is. Oh my god, guys, this is so good. Like you have yeah, yeah. No, I know the drill. Break off a piece of this. Usually use one hand. I have to use two because I'm Western. Grab a piece like that. It looks so good. That curry, straight up, this is the reason why I come to India, because I want to eat in an Indian restaurant all day long. <laughs> and this is goat, right? Yeah, this is goat. Goat. Mm. Best thing to do is like that, drop it on top, grab it right there. I'm having the mutton with the rice. The taste is pretty good. The, the gravy is like very thick gravy. Onions, ginger garlic paste. Sorry guys, I'm so hungry. The chapati with the mud in is unreal. Unreal. Oh. The pork was amazing. This is the best. <laughs> the, a local fish from the pond nearby, the fish curry. Wow. I'm the only one eating this? Oh, and then get some of this nice gravy. All right, I'm gonna use two forks so I don't wanna like ruin my hand situation right now. So I'm gonna break off pieces of the fish. So you have to go really slow because if not you get a lot of bones. So you go slow for that. Get some of this. Right, some of the gravy, nice fish, rice, curry. Super light. It's very sweet also. It's, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Look at all that meat right there. Just slowly get it, turn it over, like that, right? Just pull it out. You gotta be really careful here. Problem is, get spines. So I got a spine right here. Get rid of it. Yeah, I mean they're tiny spines, like very tiny, but you still got to chew well because if not, yeah. it's gonna hurt your stomach. Okay. Now I'm gonna try some of the gravy. Mm. Enough of the fish. I'm a little nervous with all the bones. Well. And now we have chicken. <laughs> this is the Maharashtra chicken. And this is egg right here, right? Yeah. Nice piece of egg with the chicken. Grab some of that. Wow. Big chunk. Bones? No, don't tell me that. You say that this one has bones, so I'm just gonna rip it apart here. Break it up, get rid of the bones. So bone right there. Wow, it's a big bone. Big, big bone. Get rid of that bone. Separate them. Here, break it up. Nice. Get some of that egg, some chicken, some rice. So tasty. The curry is so freaking nice. It's so organic again that it just falls apart in your mouth. For all these things, including the beer, it's uh, 3090. Like 1390. 1, Let me see the bill. So the bill is 1390. That is basically what less than twenty dollars my friend it was amazing very good thank you thank you it was so freaking good daba food is the best food when you come to, when you come to india definitely go eat at a daba it's so worth it this food is so unreal now we're gonna hit the road and we're going straight back to guwahati and i'll catch up in a second let's do it let's do it uh, Assam is the largest producer of oil all over India, right? Oil India Limited. Uh, it has the Oil India Limited, which is like producing oil for a long time. It's been years now. So, and it's uh, like sent all over the uh, India, like mostly all parts of India. 
And it's the only, you said it's the only state that produces oil? Yes, and uh, uh, the oil city which is Duliazan, that's the uh, like richest town in India which is in Assam. Basically most of the oil engineers and the good employees, it's a great city like it has oil so it's one of the, not city sorry, it's, mm, it's, a, town. it's a town basically. So it's one of the best towns in India, like the one of the richest towns in India. Obviously, I mean, if you have oil, you have money. Yes, period. obviously, obviously. Really cool fact, I didn't know that about Assam. So the only state that produces oil in India, and they supply all of India with oil, obviously. Obviously, obviously. Like the, <laughs> the upper Assam, the upper Assam, the main oco, like the main service of the people is they work with oil. Like they are the Martin. they are the employees, yeah. oil and a tea garden. Like Upper Assam is it's much more richer than this part of like uh, Assam because right. they have uh, more resources, more resources and more uh, production also. Like tea is pr produced there and it's exported and a lot of money with that. So yes, my friend. Bye bye. Thank you. I'll see you in the okay. morning. Okay, see you again tomorrow. Six in the morning. Okay. 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 Oh my friend. It was so good, like lovely experience. Thank you so much, thank you so much. We stopped at a dab and had a delicious, delicious Indian feast. We tried so many different things. My favorite thing was the mutton, it was fantastic. The fish was good too. Chicken was outstanding. And yeah, tomorrow I'm headed out to Shillong, Meghalaya, a different state. I'm gonna be there for four days, I'm super excited. And yeah, I only have like five hours of sleep, so I gotta let you guys go. So if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you on the next travel adventure in Meghalaya. Peace. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Guwahati, Assam, India. It's 5.30 a.m. and what I'm doing today is I'm waiting for my taxi and I'm driving down two and a half hours to Shillong, the capital of the state of Meghalaya. Meghalaya is like the wettest state in India. It's a huge rainforest. It looks incredible. It looks like Scotland down there. And I'm gonna be spending four nights in Shillong. I'm spending two days like exploring the capital and then two days exploring more of Meghalaya. I'm very, very excited. I've heard so many good things. And yeah, today we're gonna drive down two and a half hours. I'm gonna give you my first impressions of Meghalaya. And let's get my bags and let's go downstairs. My taxi should be here any minute. Let's go. Lots and lots of bags. I have so many bags, guys. It's insane. It's like too many. Look at that. My backpack is stuffed. Got the big one, got the small one. Keys. Let's open this guy up. I stay in Guwahati for three nights. I explored two days in Guwahati and then one day in Manas. And I gotta say, it was amazing. Food was outstanding. Loved all the sites, all the temples. Wow, I mean, so many good things to eat here. Tali's street food. I mean, you name it, they got it. Well, by the way, I love my Airbnb here. It's a three bedroom. Very safe, as you can see. Lots of locks. You're back on. <laughs> Not so bad? It's okay. This one fish? This one. Oh, let's go to Shillong. In case you guys don't know, here in India, you can hire taxis to take you between cities. So this is actually a short trip. This is a two and a half hour drive and it costs, it's costing me like 3,000 rupees, which is a little bit on the pricier side. But the thing is, this guy has to actually come back. So they charge you double. So it really is like 1,500, but they're charging you double because he has to come back all the way back here to Guwahati. When I finish from Megalaya, I'm gonna do a drive from Shillong all the way to Tezpur, which is the next city, which is like four hours from here. It's, so it's like six hours from Shillong and that's gonna be probably like, you know, 5,000 rupees. And it's the great thing is that I can just hire a taxi, tell him a time, it could be four in the morning, he'll drive me all the way and I can sleep all the way. So what am I gonna do now? Then I'll probably pass out for a bit, get some shots, but pass out and wake up with Megalaya. Can't wait. Uh, a pudgy, a pudgy. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm hungry, guys. This is Meghalaya, this is Assam, this is border. 
So we're in Meghalaya now? In Meghalaya, yes. Okay, so we have entered Meghalaya, the wettest state in India. Nothing's really changed. The only thing I do see that's different is that you see a lot more mountains over here because Assam is very flat. I mean, most of it's flat because you're along the river. Over here, we see a lot of mountains. It's like a huge cloud. And I think it's called something cloud. I forgot the nickname, why they call it Meghalaya. It's like adobe in the cloud or something. And um, yeah, I mean, oh my God, it's a lot of clouds. Rain? Rain? Rain. Rain. Maybe. I mean, it's pretty early, so it's basically just a little fog right now. We've been driving in Meghalaya for about 15 minutes, and my first impressions are that this place reminds me of Costa Rica in Central America. I mean, as you can see, we're like driving through mountains, through forests, just zigzagging through these mountains. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful out here. As I said before, the wettest state in India. I'm gonna give you some facts about the state. So Meghalaya is bordered to the north and east by Assam and to the south by Bangladesh. Its name translates to Adobe of Clouds. The capital is Shillong, a city of 143,000 between Brahmaputra and Surma Valleys in the East Kasi Hills District. The state is known for its mountains, valleys, and highland plateaus, many of which are covered in thick, lush green vegetation. One third of the state is forest, which is home to a rich and diverse array of mammals, birds, and plants, including tigers, elephants, hullock gibbons, gray hornbills, black bear, peacock, leopards, some bardeer, and Siberian ducks. Meghalaya didn't become an autonomous state until 1972. Prior to that, it was part of Assam. Meghalaya is known for being the wettest state in India, and the town of Chirapunji, also known as Sorha, in the East Kasi Hills District, is often credited to being the wettest place on earth, and it averages over 460 inches of rain per year. English is the official language of Meghalaya, while Kasi and Garu are also widely spoken. Meghalaya is known for natural beauty, which was noticed by the British during the rule of India from 1858 to 1947. British rulers in the country nicknamed Meghalaya the Scotland of the East because of its highlands, fog, and gorgeous scenery. And there you have it, Scotland of the East. And the food out here looks incredible. They have a lot of pork dishes, which is very different from the rest of India. So we're gonna eat a lot of food here in Shillong. Oh man, I am so excited. I think my friend and me need to stop for breakfast. Breakfast. Yes. You know, I was telling you before that it reminds me of Costa Rica, but it also reminds me of Malawi, the country of Malawi in Africa. Just because it's like a little bit of green and then the brown and then the way the towns are here it looks similar, very similar to that, that country. Lots of green hills. I love how the fog overlooks it. And I haven't been to Scotland, so I can't tell you it looks like Scotland, but I'm guessing it does just because of how the green factor here and it also reminds me of countries like in Southeast Asia, like Malaysia, driving to the Cameroon Highlands up there in the mountains. You know, it was very hilly, very green. So that's another place that it reminds me of. It's another incredible undiscovered place in India. I can't believe I never heard about it before planning this trip. We're currently about 30 minutes outside of Shillong. And what I gotta tell you is that there's so many trucks on this road, it's insane. My driver is like literally weaving through the trucks, honking and honking. And the road is just like a super winding road the entire time, you know, lots of mountains really high hills actually not mountains hills and i mean we just keep going up and down and around and turning i mean it's it's just never ending and i'd suggest not eating anything before coming uh to do this uh, little journey but yeah i mean it's so many trucks and over here as you can see on the side of the road is a lot of uh like a lot of lumber a lot of wood you know lots of little huts and they're selling uh you know basically just wood and then there's also a lot of dabas so dabas are like traditional roadside restaurants on the highways and that's usually for truck drivers if you didn't see my other video it's a huge variety of indian food from all the states of india it's very nice sun's coming out fog is coming down just a gorgeous place i mean i'm super super excited for the next four days I cannot wait to eat some pork dishes there. As I said earlier, pork is like the number one thing here. Pork, 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 pork. Like pork intestines on skewers. Oh, yummy. Right now we're like in a super tight, windy road through a thick bush. Okay guys, so we just stopped here at this lookout point. Everybody's here taking photos. So guys, it's amazing. Wow. It's a lake? Yeah. This is the biggest lake in Shillong or Meghalaya, you say? Yeah, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks huge. 
Man, it's so beautiful. And as you can see, the fog just going over this like peninsula right there. Incredible. Everybody's stopping here. Uh, there's also some shops here so you can buy some snacks if you want. Man, this is just incredible. First impressions of Megalaya, incredible. When are you going to upload this vlog? This vlog, uh, a month. Yeah. A month. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we don't know if it really is the biggest lake in Megalaya, but I mean, <laughs> he thinks it is. I mean, it looks huge. Ooh, did we crash into something? Ooh. It's okay, did we hit something? Ooh, ooh. Oh. We just crashed into that thing right there. Uh, yeah, that wasn't good. He scratched up his car really bad. I've been getting this question a lot. People keep asking me, you know, why have you returned to India for the third time? And all I can say is incredible India. It's so diverse. Every single state is so different from the other. And it's like this place, like I didn't know this existed. This really feels like a whole different world from India. And you know, language changes, food changes, people change, and landscape changes everywhere you go in India. It's a place you can explore for years and years. I mean, this is my third trip and that's in one year. So I did three trips in one year and I feel like I can come here two or three times a year for the next 10, 15 years and just scratch the surface. That's how diverse it is. I mean, so many places from, you know, hill stations down to beaches, you got cities in the center. You have so many places.